Our lines are going to open this very morning. And as I did say earlier, it is not in our place to analyze or critically evaluate any news item. But there are two things that I must touch upon before our lines open. Those two things are what the Supreme Court Governor is doing in Imo State, Hubu Zodema, an ex-criminal, an ex 419 and also what the man they brought as the police commissioner is also doing there. We want to make it abundantly clear that those that they arrested must be released. We campaign and we champion for the freedom of everybody who is innocent. They have done nothing wrong to anybody. This level of intimidation I must also this very morning bring to the awareness and to the attention of the British High Commission in Abuja and to also alert the United States Embassy in the zoo as well in Abuja and their consulate in Lagos. That this level of intimidation has been going on for a very long time. This level of bastardization of the rule of law has been going on for a very long time. Nobody is paying attention. I don't know when it became the duty of the police to arrest people who are visiting or who claim to be visiting a native doctor. I don't subscribe to native doctors. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in all that rubbish. I believe in science and I believe in technology. And of course, I believe in faith that only comes from, from the belief in the supreme almighty creator of everything that is made. These are the things that we must understand. Politicians go to see native doctors. Everybody go to see native doctors. I don't know when it is the duty of anybody, including this very Yoruba police commissioner who is in Imo State, to predict a crime that hasn't already happened. I don't know where on this very earth, be it in civil or common law, where you can arrest somebody and claim without any evidence and then claim that in the future they may commit crime. I have never heard or seen such rubbish before. Because what Hope Osadema is inviting and this idiot, this stupid police commissioner in Imo State is anarchy. And I want Britain to understand this very clearly. I want every commentator to understand this. You cannot go about arresting people for no reason, then claiming that they may commit crime in the future. What sort of nonsense is that? People go to native dogs, people go to pastors, people go to shrines, people go to a lot of places, people go to nightclubs, people go to restaurants, people go to where they believe that their faith could be enhanced. People go to the mosque. Not everybody goes to church. Some people go to go and see a native doctor so it is not your business it is not your business it, to interfere with people's mode of worship it is not your business this is what hope all of you stupid useless hopeless supporters of that supreme court governor in Imo state must see what he's doing we are being provoked every blessed day people are being arrested being tortured being detained without trial every blessed day We've been singing this same song and nobody wants to listen. The reason why I'm saying it this morning is that when our own madness starts, we'll make reference to this very broadcast. When Britain begins to write, we'll make reference to Even that useless BBC, I have said to some of you that the problem that we have as a people is that we are the cause of our own problem. Some of you idiots patronizing BBC, you can see the rubbish they are writing. You are bringing death and destruction upon your lives. You people, you are bringing an end to your existence as a race and as a people because of your stupidity, because you don't listen. Because you don't listen. Look at what BBC Boy is doing. Look at what they are doing. So BBC Boy is now telling me that in England, who the, the interest they represent, you are telling me that BBC World News, BBC in England, will support the mass arrest of the people who have not committed any crime. How can you go and arrest people who are traveling, minding their own business? You never arrested for any people who are coming in in their droves, people that broke the curfew, the lockdown curfew. You never arrested them because they are armed. Because for any Janja, they have guns and they have ammunition. They have bullets. They can fight. They can defend themselves. You don't arrest them. But this Yoruba police commissioner in Imo State, you feel you can arrest people who are minding their business. They are not armed. They've done nothing wrong. 
you arrest them because we are not armed the reason why you're doing this is because our land is peaceful because we are peace loving people we are not armed that's why you're doing what you do and everybody is now failing everybody is pretending they cannot see this level of injustice you are claiming you cannot see it our the governors you have in Biafra land but especially in Igbo should I say in the southeast they are hell-bent on serving Fulani interest and you will kill your people you will do anything you will arrest to prove to your Fulani masters that you are very strong before I came on air this morning I've posted something on my page about Dave Omahi sometimes some of these governors you think they're human beings some of them you think they're normal and then they they proceed to not only prove you wrong but to bring shame and disgrace upon themselves july 27th dave Omar, he said that there will be a vigilante for the region a regional vigilante which is how it should be and today he has changed his mind no more vigilante go state by state Amoteku is for the whole of Yoruba land, the whole of Oduduwa land, the whole of the West. That is how it is done. Fulani, Miyetiala, a terrorist group launched their own vigilante. They did not just say Fulani, they said they will cover Fulani is all over the zoo. Dave Uma, he came out this morning to say there will be no vigilante. In other words, a green light to the Fulani come and invade us because you want to be president, you want to be vice. It is this level of wickedness, this level of evil, this level of, of self-hatred that I don't understand in our people. I just don't understand it. Sometimes I wonder what sort of God made these people. Even those that you expect to reason and to think properly, they, they cannot think properly, they cannot reason properly. I, wa I wonder why a governor, chairman of the Southeast Governors Forum, will come out and say there will be no vigilante, but Yorubas have one. And that is why you no longer hear about foreigners abducting and killing in Yoruba land. They are now in our area. Instead of us to rise up and defend our land, you can see the way they are behaving. You can see it. Hope Zodema is busy in collaboration with the Yoruba Police Commissioner arresting people who are going on their way to somewhere that doesn't concern anybody. So what they are telling me now is that there is no freedom of assembly, no freedom of movement. People can no longer assemble in a democracy. In a democracy. In a democracy, I don't. I just can't get my head around it. And as a result of what they have done, this was what happened with Boko Haram that some of you have forgotten. Because the thing about black people is that you teach them something. It goes in through one ear, it, it, it pops out through the other. There is no ability to retain information and reference it at the right time. This was what they did to, I'm saying it so that Britain can hear this morning, so that USA can hear. This was how they provoked Boko Haram into becoming a terrorist group all over the world. Every idiot is now condemning Boko Haram. But what Nigerian police did to Boko Haram that made them to turn from a peaceful movement to an armed group, none of you idiots can remember because you're black people, your brains don't retain information. Are you aware that Boko Haram was a peaceful movement? Ag rightfully so agitating for the caliphate do you know it is their right to agitate for do you know that anybody can agitate for anything as long as you're doing it peacefully are you aware of that homosexuals and gays they're agitating for the right for freedom and equality all over the world they don't carry guns no one has killed them or arrested them or say hey, i don't agree with your way of life the same way that Boko Haram under Muhammad Yusuf was busy agitating for the caliphate, campaigning, going to, through their rallies, but as usual, the politicians, they got jealous, as usual, they rose up and said, oh, kill him. Do you know that the leader of Boko Haram was killed, Muhammad Yusuf, for no reason, for no reason, he was killed. And as a result of his death, his followers got angry and they picked up arms. But today, some of you fools, when you condemn Boko Haram, you don't go back to the beginning to blame those who are responsible. The same way that we are being provoked every blessed day, IPOB is being provoked every day, every day. And Britain is there, they are watching. The zoo is there, they are watching. They are senate, they are, they are, they are law courts, everybody is watching. Do you think if you arrest 67 people, you will stop us from doing what we are doing? Is that what you think, seriously? The day we pick up arms now, all of you idiots, some of you fools, some of you efulefus will cut the story and you won't start from the beginning. They must release those they are holding. The same way that I, I campaigned for the release of 
everybody who has been detained it, i don't care if you're a biafran or not the zoo is a failed state nigeria is a man-made produce it, it is a, a, a hopeless british contraption meant to trap you fools you niggers you african demented fools you walk on two legs you have two hands you claim you have brain but most of you are foolish beyond human redemption who opposed Adema should arrest those, should release those he arrested. That stupid police commissioner in Imo State must. Why are you parading people who are who have not been proven guilty of anything? I don't understand. And you have journalists that claim they went to school. They call them the fourth estate. They are supposed to be the custodians of the conscious of the consciousness of I say the conscience of society. The police commissioner called you for a parade of people that committed no crime, no guns, nothing. And you idiots, including the BBC, you fools that claim you are journalists, you, you Neanderthals, you bastards, you went to go and condemn innocent people that did nothing. That is the, oh, that is the brain of a black man. That is why it makes me, sometimes I ask God, why did you make me a black man? These people, they make me, they irritate me, they make me sick. I see them and I, I want to vomit. You arrested people. None of these useless journalists were able to ask the police commissioner, what did these people do? What is their crime? They are going to a native doctor. Is going to a native doctor a crime? Where is it a crime, I ask? Where on this earth is it a crime to, to go to a native doctor? You, you hope also the man, you went to a native doctor. You go to native doctors to go and do your, your jazz to try to retain power. Is that not correct? I am asking, when did it become a crime for somebody to visit a native doctor? That is why you arrested 67 people and you locked them up for no reason. And people are there waking. I don't know what is. I can't understand. No wonder God gave over black man to white people to use as they want. The way a black man reasons is 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 is. She naked, you know, it is frightening. You are a journalist. You went to school of journalism. Some of you went to university. That that idiotic establishment, BBC, those fools, and some of you idiots that listen to me, some of you idiots that go and like their page and patronize them. Chineke Kabuno, God will punish all of you. People are evil. You are bringing evil into our land. You don't know BBC is evil. You are so stupid, you are so demented, you don't know BBC is evil. You don't know that, you don't understand that. You don't know they brought them in to conquer you. You are so foolish. You are daft. You don't know anything. They arrest your brothers, they arrest your sisters. This level of stupidity we exhibit with innocent men and women arrested is the same nonsense. That was why Fulani can come to our land and kill and rape our mothers and we do nothing every blessed day and you have a governor a sitting governor all he does is to arrest his own people all he does is to keep giving signal to fulani come come and take us over because the idiot wants to be a vice president you people are there condoning all this evil on a daily basis and you want to be regarded as human beings we are opening the line now please so that you can call and as usual please when somebody is on the line don't try to i blocked some people this morning before I came on air, people were busy calling. So that means you don't want to listen to the gospel, you don't want to hear, you don't want to learn anything. Your concern is to hear your voice on radio. That is your concern. I don't know what is wrong with you. I don't know what is wrong with black people. I have no idea what is, what is in it, why we lack discipline. You wait for the lines to be open. And when somebody is talking on radio, try and listen. You may learn something from that person. That person may be saying exactly what you had in mind to say. You just keep quiet. But people will just be calling and calling and calling and calling. All they want to do is to air their views. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Of course it's not. But try and listen and try and learn. That is the only way you progress. That is the only way we can move forward. Let us take this call. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? We are live and direct, and the world is listening. Go ahead. Yeah. Good morning. My name is uh, OK. It's your phone. I'm from Anambra State. It didn't mean local government. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. My question goes 
like this. Um, first of all, I have to thank you for coming down with the harness and Debo. And um, another thing I want to ask, when uh, this uh, Biafra... I'm listening, go ahead. Have we lost you? Have we lost you? We have lost him. He wanted to ask a question, but unfortunately he is no longer there. He is no longer there. We have lost him. We have lost him as usual. Our lines are clogged up, please. I ask some of you to try and call us on Skype, please, if you can. You call us on Skype because I don't know. As usual, the lines are clogged up and it has crashed. That is the very funniest thing about it all. It has crashed. And what we are now going to do is to please try and switch over to Skype. And that Skype is IPOB2020 at Outlook.com. IPOB2020 at Outlook.com. Our brother was talking to us, uh, but unfortunately, we are no longer able to proceed. Let us go and take this caller who happens to be on Skype. The caller on Skype, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you're calling from. This is Radio Biafra. Yes. Go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Of course, I said I can hear you. Go ahead. I can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. Okay. I'm Chuku Kelo. I'm from Anambra State. I'm calling from Abuja, FCC. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um. Thank you for everything you've been doing. I, I thank you. And God will continue to guide and protect you. Until you get beer from. Yes, thank you. So, um, I just want to make some contributions. Um, we need to sensitize our people in America so that they will be just this American uh, elections that, that are coming so that they will have to sensitize themselves that vote for Trump because I believe that our our freedom still lies on it. You know, you know, this is a a battle of life, uh, light, uh, light and darkness. Uh, we can all see that the, the, the spirits of darkness are solely against you know Trump because Trump is for us and we really have to sense our people. Your line, your line is no longer clear. Your line is no longer clear, but I can understand precisely what you're saying. Are we to sensitize those in America, or are those in America to sensitize us? As I said, we have taken these, um, should I say, um, spirit of individualism to the extreme, to a very damaging extreme, I would say. It is not the duty of us to educate those. Those in America are supposed to know more than we do. They live with Trump. Anybody who doesn't understand that Trump means well for everybody, that person is a fool. Trump is the only one to ever, to ever come out openly to complain about the killing of non-Muslims in the zoo. Trump was the only person to host people in White House. People who are being who are direct victims of terrorism and Janjawudism in the zoo. It's only Trump. It was Trump that said no, that he would not give arms to the Nigerian army because he knows they will use it to kill innocent people. Anybody who follows the news will hear Lai Muhammad yesterday complaining that the world doesn't want to give arms to them because of Trump. Had it been Obama by now, we'd all be dead. All of us will be cleared off. After all, Obama killed um, um, Gaddafi. Look at what Libya looks like today. Anybody who doesn't understand that Trump, Trump is like those of us, when sometimes when you hear me speak, you will think I hate black people, I despise other people, I, all that is, that is rubbish. We are trying to get you to stand on your two feet to be able to reason properly. It is not hate, it's called tough love. What Trump practices is tough love, nothing to do with racism. Only a fool will see it otherwise. Had it been any other person, uh, maybe Hillary Clinton or, or, or Obama there in office, by now our land will be overrun, overrun by foreign terrorists, by now. 
All they need to do is to give money to Clinton Foundation, 500 million, and that's it. They should just tell him, go and do whatever you like. Trump is a good man, and we must try and support him. Because it, people say, oh, but it, it's been four years and Trump hasn't given you Biafra. I say, because some of you are very dumb. You don't understand the dynamics of international politics. You know nothing about international relations. You have no idea. After all, people don't go to school in the zoo. What they go to is uh, glorified uh, ignorance centers. They call them universities. The ignorance centers, you go there to learn how to become ignorant. Trump cannot do anything for Biafra without USA Africa Dex, the policymakers writing a report or memo saying time is now right to do XYZ. The whole world was against Southern Sudan when they started. Southern Sudan fought a war for 30 years and today they're independent. When Eritrea started, people were against them. Why did you pick up arms? Why are you fighting? Today, Eritrea is free. These are the things that our people don't understand. They have no brain. They have no clue. They don't understand what is going on. Until the State Department in America writes and says to Trump, something is wrong in Nigeria. Trump will do nothing. And mind you that Nigeria belongs to Britain. And ultimately, Trump will also go to Britain to ask Britain, what do you want us to do? And if Britain says don't do anything, they won't do anything because Nigeria belongs to Britain. You think Nigeria belongs to you? You are daft. Nigeria belongs to Britain. Britain does whatever they want. Don't you know that? Let us take this call, please. I have another caller who happens to be on Skype. This very caller, can you hear me? The caller on Skype, can you hear me? No, they cannot hear me. Let's take another one. The caller on Skype, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you're calling from, please, if you may. Yes, um, yes good morning. Good morning and um, great Biafra fans all over the world. Um, lovers of freedom, friends of Biafra fans, I would uh, proceed. I don't know if I'm coming out. You're coming out very clear. Please go ahead. Ask your questions, please. Go ahead. Please, please, very briefly, because a lot of people are waiting. Go ahead. Okay, um, Mazi, uh, good morning once again. I just want to uh, use this opportunity to uh, draw your attention based on um, the recent uh, developments in your programs where people are calling your attention to certain issues that please um, you should also endeavor to look holistically at uh, applied here in the family in Akwa Ibom State. I wouldn't want to say much, not that not to prejudice what is ongoing, but we call on your attention here so that uh, at the end of the day, we don't lose it here in Akwa Ibom. You have spoken to us, you have made attempt to reach out to us, but uh, many of us are still feeling frustrated here. I remain Usoro, Daniel, Daniel Usoro. Uh, why, why, are you why, are you, why are you people? Why are you frustrated? Why is it people dragging for position? I've said, I've made it very clear before. When somebody comes and begins to say something bad about the coordinator, and that person wants to assume the position of that coordinator, I won't allow any changes to take place. I have said this time and time again. If you have legitimate concern, what people tend to do sometimes is that they go, they think that they can build. Um, oh, sorry, are you listening to me? Are you listening? Are you hearing me? Yes. Good, good. Now listen very carefully. People think that they can build Kaba, they can go and get their friends. You know, the coordinator in this senatorial zone can go and go, you know, uh, align with other coordinators in other senatorial zones. Now they form a Kaba. If one of them does something wrong and you remove the idiot, then the rest will start agitating for him. He must stay there. Do I ask people, do you think that Biafra is going to be like the zoo? It can never be. Once you are power hungry, and you are agitating for your coordinator to be removed because you want to take over or you're doing it for your friend to take over, I will say no to it. But if the concerns you're raising is legitimate, because I understand that in some areas in Aquaibom that the people are delving okay, um, into... Okay, Masi, yes. uh, uh, based on uh, um, what uh, you have said, I think um, that is um, the, the information you are getting is not entirely um, the truth. What is happening? No, here we are investigating. We are looking into what is happening in Aquaibom, and we are going um, to resolve it. Usura, listen to me very carefully. We are looking into what is happening in Aquaibom. We are going to resolve it. The thing with our people is that once you say to somebody, "This it is a disease with an African man," you have served. As I keep saying every blessed day. If there were to be an organization more resolute, more formidable, somebody who can do this job better than myself, 
I will stand down. But I have not seen any. Since we started, I have not seen any. Because it is actually, this job sucks your life away. It's, it drains your blood. You don't sleep at night. You always worry. If it is not one problem, is another. People are being arrested. People are being shot. People, uh, 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 you know, family members that fell that you don't have to go to school. You have to pay their fees and all the rest of it. There, are, there is so, so much problem every blessed day. And I say to people, that leadership is not just going there and saying to people, oh, why don't you uh, pay dues? It is about what you can produce, what you can generate. What you can get the people to do for the advancement of our people, for our cause. And the, the issue of our is going to be dealt with. But if people are agitating for the removal of a coordinator just for the sake of it, the answer is no. But if a coordinator is found wanting, of course. They will be coached, they will be advised, they will be disciplined as to how best to handle it. They cannot do it because not everybody is qualified to lead. People, sometimes people think that leadership is easy. You just come out, oh, I want to lead, I want to lead. But they cannot do it. That is why there are no other people like us. As I wrote yesterday, people think that it's easy. You can open a radio station, you start talking and then people will follow you. You start leading a mass movement, it doesn't work that way. They try and after six, seven months, they collapse. They know it's not easy. People were driven away, were expelled from IPOB. They thought if they go and open a radio station sounding like, like um, Radio Biafra, that they will get the following and the mass um, followership they need to become relevant. Today, they have collapsed. They cannot do it. There are people who think, who have inflated opinion of themselves. You think that because you're doing something and people are saying, oh, you're doing very well, oh, you're doing very well, oh, you're this, because of that, it goes into your brain and you think you've arrived. You go, on your, you go out on your own and you see that you're irrelevant. That's how life is. The issue of Akwaibon will be resolved before Sunday. Sunday is only two days away. Before Sunday, a very heavy announcement will be made regarding Akwaibon. But we must learn to be together. That is why there is no party politics in Africa. That is why you have dictatorships in Africa. Because we don't know how to follow. We don't know how to be disciplined. We don't know how to criticize and remain objective about it. Please, these are the things we ought to learn. It is a lesson that we are all prepared to learn regarding Akwaibom. And Akwaibom is very strong, I must tell you. Very, very strong. And we want that strength to continue. Thank you very much. And before Sunday, it will be resolved. I have another caller on the line. This caller, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Mazi, good morning, sir. Thank you very much. Your name and where you're calling us from, please. Oh, my name is Bright Daniel. I'm calling you from New York. Bright Daniel. It's a very beautiful name. Yes. Please go ahead. Thank you. I have a question. Go ahead. My question goes like this. Is there in any way, this is just like a reassurance, because our eternal leader, Tim Odme Gojuku, whom people we are really hoping on, that when he will come back, that he will bring back Piafra. Yes. But lo and behold, he came back, and people lured him to Nigeria. Yes. People lured him to being, because to me, I still believe that the Modume Gojuku has not been buried. Because when I see them covering his coffin with Nigerian flag, I felt so bad. So my question to you is this. In there in any way that you will be evaluated into agreeing to anything Nigeria? Thank That's you. number one question. No, no, let us no hold on to your questions because we are going to have a conversation. You raised an issue that I've been expecting people to raise for a long time. But sometimes maybe we forget on when we call we become over exuberant and we forget you have read keep your other questions don't forget them please <clears throat> let me answer this Thank one you, you've just you've just raised our eternal leader dim or the was in ivory coast even as a child i was hoping the stories my father used to tell me i felt that one day this messiah is going to come <clears throat> excuse me from ivory coast and save everybody that was what i used to think as a child I used to think that Ojuku will come back one day and all of us will be saved, right? It didn't happen that way. And I will tell you what happened. It is exactly what they have tried to do to me. Exactly the same thing. 
I had meeting with the governors and with some elders. They said you must renounce. Oh, okay, see me. That's a way you do it. You do this. You do that. You do that. You contest. You float political party. You have the followership. People will vote you in. Maybe you can become a senator. Or maybe you have your state governor. You know the same rubbish. And I said no. They asked me why did I say, why, why am I saying no? Why do I keep saying? I said I said to them because the man that I revere and respect. Dim or the Jupu, you promised him the same thing. He came back, he was he, he he was then and still till now the most popular man in the whole of the zoo political space, Nigeria. He came back in Newe, Newe, he lost election to a non-entity. To a non-entity. Senatorial election, he contested and he failed. They rigged him out. I know those who were instrumental in rigging out Ujupu. So, the, the same thing they're asking us to do now, IPOB, they asked our leader to do, Ojubu. He did it, and they rubbished him, they messed him up. You know what the Fulani said after that? They said, oh, look at the man you call your icon. He's your leader, he's your general, he led you in war. Look at him. Ordinary Newe Senatorial District, he couldn't win. He failed to a man called on Woody. Go and look at it anywhere. So, that, you see, I am a student of history. I, I allow myself to be guided by history, what has happened in the past. But when they write, when they call BBC to talk about their rubbish, Hebrew presidents, all that garbage, they never remind them that our leader came back, they lured him into zoo politics. That was why I said no to zoo politics. But you know one thing our people are very good at? Once they give you advice that is wrong and you say no, they go up and say, oh, he doesn't listen to people. Oh, I he doesn't want to hear what he, he doesn't listen to advice. Whenever they're saying somebody doesn't listen to advice, it's because that person has failed to compromise. These are the things I want our people, our hardcore Biafrans to understand because they're the ones that will lead us to freedom. Not all the flavors by the side. It is the hardcore that will lead us to freedom, not the idiots by the side. Do you understand? On no, they have given me everything and I said no. They came to, to DSS to give me, I said no. They came to, 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 to prison, I said no. They came to my house, I said no. They called me governor's meeting, I said no, I don't want anything. All I want is freedom. All I want is Biafra. Why do you think I have I had issues with, uh, uh, with uh, Chief Miyamoto? Why? Why do you think I had issues with him? Because of the same thing. I said, that way people are going, Ojuku went that way. They rubbished him. Look at him, state. See what they did to him in him, state. The same political process. You join. You after a while, they you vote. After voting, they declare whoever they like as their winner, and that's the end of the game. So I will never join any zoo politics. I will Thank never you. stop fighting for Biafra. Good. Listen to Good. me very carefully. My father, my mother died as a result of this. I have lost men as a result of this. I family so much. members that I was close to have died. They did not die for one Nigeria. They did not die for Nigerian party politics. They died fighting for freedom. And that freedom we are going to get on their behalf. Your next question, please. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So the reassurance is that even if they call you to make you Nigerian president, that you always stand on Biafra. Because I want to know the reason why somebody will stand and say, I am dying for Biafra because my leader has said, so you have clarified that. So my second question... They gave me is, vice presidency. Go and ask DSS. The they gave me vice. They said they'll make me the vice president of the zoo. I should drop my agitation. This happened in October of 2015. And I said, no, I won't drop it. Ask them. That was the day I gave them the advice about building railways. And they're now building railways everywhere. Ask them where the advice came from. From my meeting with DSS in Abuja. And I told them I don't want anything from them. Please go ahead. The next question. Good. Thank you. My second question is this. We do not know, and you have to teach us. You have really taught us a lot. We all appreciate. At this point, I am thinking that what we need from you is this. What do we do? Not for my sake. You have promised to answer every question here, honestly, and uh, um, yes. to clarify everything. So um, what do we do? What do we do? I know that you have suggested that. Let we me tell you what we are going to do. Come out in mass. Listen, listen, what? Listen, listen. Are you listening to me? 
I want okay. to answer your question. You said, what yes. do we do? You've asked the question, and I will answer it. It's exactly what we are doing now. We need to enlighten sensitization. As I said before, we had no mass media during the war. That was why we lost. Now, by the very special grace of the Most High, that is social media, we have our own radio station, we have our own TV. At least to an extent, we are now offering what I will call an alternative narrative to the lies and the deception of the zoo and their British handlers. You are fighting against powers and principalities that you cannot see. This is the thing about people don't understand. Biafra is not a stroll in the park. I have said this many times, allow me to repeat. You are fighting enemies and powers that you cannot see. They understand that Biafra is the gateway to progress in Africa and sitting on Biafra and stifling Biafra is the only way to ensure that black Africa remains poor. That was when Britain came, they saw the light in our land, especially after the fall of Arochuku. And they decided to name us darkness, which is what nigger is. Nigger means darkness, you cannot see. That was a way of Britain saying that they are putting off that very light that God has planted in the land of Biafra, that light of hope to the whole of Africa. That was why when our leader rose up, Ujubu, something told him to put the rising sun where, if you look at our flag, have you, you've seen Biafra flag, I'm sure you have it. Is that correct? Go and look at the black strip. Ask yourself, why did Ujubu put the sun at the strip where there is black in the flag. Why did he not put the sun on the red or the green or on top of it? Why did he put it where on that, uh, that aspect of our flag where there is a black line? Why? Because we represent the light in the continent of darkness. We are the hope of the whole black race all over the world. That was why that rising sun was placed there. And it is the duty of some people to make sure that Biafra doesn't come. I've said this thing to you before. I have met officials of the UN and I asked them a point blank question, the same way you're asking me. Why is it that you would not want to discuss Biafra at the UN? He said that he has tried his best. Anytime he goes into a meeting and tries to raise the issue of Biafra, people will just walk away. That there is something about Biafra that gets into people and they walk away. And we know those who are doing it. What we are doing is what we're doing now. We sensitize our people and we are going to march eventually. I don't want to keep pronouncing all these things all the time. I've been saying it. And we are going to have our own referendum. It doesn't matter what anybody else does. We are going to have our own referendum in time. And mind you that we have enemies both outside and within. People who out of ignorance, a combination of ignorance of self-hatred, of envy, greed, jealousy, ignorance and stupidity, or should I say self-aggrandizement, they want to perpetuate the rule of the Fulani because that allows them to remain relevant. Like the, you see the likes of Hopus or the man, all the rest of them. You can see that. So when you are dealing with multiple enemies from everywhere, you guard your main plan very jealously and very carefully. That is why we have made progress this far. But I'm telling you this. Number one, we sensitize our people, which we are doing now. Number two, we are going to have a referendum. And number three, we are going to march. My last question. Go ahead. My last question. My last question. Are we having any leadership crisis in IPOD? No. And do you have a standby government that can immediately take effect as soon as Zoo collapses? Or planning to set up a government? Collapse. Now, now, the first one is no. There can never be. IPOB is one family. People have views, as you expect it to be. You don't, people have views, and I don't want to stifle every opinion. People are, are allowed to hold divergent views within IPOB, but not to the extent of trying to rock the boat. If they do, the person will be off. I don't care who you are. If you rob the boat, you'll be off. You open multiple Facebook accounts, you'll be yapping rubbish from now to the kingdom come. After seven, eight months, you'll fizzle up. There were people that felt that they were all and all within the movement. I expelled them. They left. Today, they are begging to appear on shows being run by sex traffickers. That's how it is. Once you leave IPUB, you lose relevance. There, there can never be any leadership crisis because we are one family. People have need to
to voice their frustration is entirely up to them. But within IPOB family, it doesn't go out. Secondly, you asked about forming a government. When our people give us the mandate, we shall do so. The mandate hasn't been given to us yet. And we are dealing with <laughs> die-hard Republicans. Biafran people are Republicans. You hear people always tell me, oh, have you consulted us? I can go and consult the Aminabu of Okreka. But if I don't consult everybody within that very area, you have not done any consultation because we are Republican in nature. Everybody wants to be carried along. That is why sometimes it looks as if, you know, there are disagreements here and there. No, everybody wants to be carried along. It is in our nature. That is the way we are as a people because we are Democrats and you don't blame them. So that is why we keep explaining every day. There are some things that we are doing that some people may not know. Though they may be in the hierarchy, they won't know. Because it's for their own good. It is not everything that everybody knows. I am the one who knows everything. People know what I want them to know in order to preserve the sanctity of the movement and to stop uh, people from outside from penetrating and destroying us from within. We shall form a government when our people give us that very mandate. And I'm not going to t tell you how that mandate is going to come. Because if I say it now, our enemies will go and block that very access. But it's going to come very, very soon. And the world will be shocked. Our plans are intact you, and we are moving along. Thank you very much for calling. All the people that died, I know you will never forget. All the people that have lost their lives for this Biafra, you will never forget. Thank you and uh, you are a savior. Thank, Thank you, Mohamed Thank you very much. How can I forget? When Biafra comes, we are going to establish our people in such a way that everybody who lost a, love, a loved one in this very effort, the wife or husband or children or whatever, by the time Biafra comes, where they will live, the richest millionaires will not live there. Where they live, the people that sacrifice, where they will stay, where they will live, the area where they will live, people who are multi-billionaires cannot afford to live there. We can't abandon those that fought for us. Did I abandon our veterans? Until I came in 2014 to start 30th of May Remembrance. Was it happening before? If I can remember those that fought, the class of 67 to 70, when I was a baby, if I can remember those that fought then, how about those that fought with me now and fell beside me? How can I forget them? It's not possible. You know that. You know me very well. You know it's not possible. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you're calling from. And your questions, please. I want difficult questions this morning. Very, very difficult, please. Go ahead. Okay, sir. Good morning, sir. My name is um, Young Gono Feyaga from, uh, from Essen, Biafra, but uh, I live in Germany. Thank you very much. From yeah. So first, I want to thank you, sir, for for everything you've been doing. You've been doing a great job. And uh, I want to uh, all our Biafran people, those that believe in freedom, to stand by you. They shouldn't listen to what our enemies are saying because we have enemies everywhere. Yes. Like you said, me also, I discovered it that to, to live with black people is not easy. It is not. One of our biggest problems is jealousy and hatred. One would be saying, why not me? The last time I was asking someone, I said, ever since U Una, the Kano and IPOB have not come out, have not started fighting for, for freedom, where have, you, where have all of you been? Because the only people that have the mind, we know it, is IPOB, is Biafran, is IPOB, is you. We know the people that have this mind. Because Nigeria, Nigeria government, everybody know them, nobody. We're able to talk to them, not until the uh, IPOB issue a match, not until you come up, not until uh, the Biafrans. We know them. So I, as I told these people, I said, you should keep your jealousy. Let's come together as one. I don't believe in Niger Delta, this Niger Delta, that is all bullshit because you can't do it. Look at Una Adikano. He's been doing a great job. That's why people are trying to spoil his name. We know our people. Their mind is full of jealousy. So, sir, I want to thank you for everything you've been doing. And I'm using this medium to talk to every Biafran and everyone that believes in freedom. My Asian brother, my Benin brothers and sisters, the people from the Niger Delta, so-called Niger Delta, because I don't believe in it. We are all Southeast. We are Biafrans. 
we should all come together because division cannot help us. And you are doing a great job to bring us together. And as so much thank God today, many people are beginning to realize their mistake that all we need is unity to conquer these people that are coming after us. Because one, pe one person can't do it alone. We need unity to conquer them. But sir, I want to ask one question, sir. What do you think we need to do to push these people back? Because we know them. Terrorists are terrorists. They are not good people. Me, I never even like any of them. This is the fact. Right from time, I'll be preaching this, that these people, they are not good people. I'll be saying it as well to some of my friends. But I thank God today, most of them, they all believe in IPOB and Piafra. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Yes, stay where you are. Let me, let me deal with your, the issues that you raised. <clears throat> okay. First of all, you can never ever stop a black African man from being the devil that he is. I say it without any apologies to anybody. It's true. Black men behave like demons. Let me put it to you this way. Every good, listen carefully, every good leader Africa ever had, with the exception of Nelson Mandela, was assassinated. Yeah, their assassination was facilitated by their own people. Is that not correct? Yeah, it's true. Yes, yeah, it's very fast. Good. It's true, yeah. We remember the issue of the very handsome, vibrant Thomas Sankara that yeah. came out to prove to the whole world that a black man can reason. He didn't do it by rhetoric. He went in and transformed his country, Upper Volta, Burkina Faso, built yeah. it overnight, overnight, that they started to export food. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm hearing you, sir. Of course. They, they used his best friend, Blaise Campeore, to kill him. Yeah. Look yes. at Patrice Lumumba and yeah. Mobutu Sesu Seku. Yeah. That is in a black man. A black man cannot take it away from himself. Do you know that in Zobuku was planned by Britain? One day, the day yeah. I'll reveal it, people will go mental. Do you know that the coup of 1966 was planned by Britain. Are you aware of that? Uh, yeah, you are very right, sir. <laughs> Do you know why they planned the coup? No, sir. Because Biafra land, under Biafra land, all of us, the East, under Dr. Michael Opera, listen to this, was the fastest growing economy in the whole world. Yeah. Opera was growing the, the economy of the eastern region at the rate of 40% every year. I didn't say 4%, 40%, 40% every year. It was the fastest yeah. growing economy in the world. Do you know what Michael Opera did? Yeah. Michael Opera had steel works. Michael Opera was producing cement. Michael Opera was building ceramics. Michael Opera was producing steel in Enugu. Michael Opera was industrializing. In other words, we are manufacturing the things we are consuming. Britain yeah. said no, even this um, uh, one Nigeria cannot hold his over back. Let's spoil it. That was why they planned the coup. Are we aware of that? Yeah, I'm, uh, you are very much aware. Now, now see, much aware. You, see, you see, listen to me, my dear brother. Yeah. The enemies will try to divide us. Some of us will provide a willing vessel and tool for the enemy to use. Look at our governors. You yeah. you uh, look at Edo State. What is that yeah. guy's name? Isaiah Yemu or whatever he's called. He's a pastor. Yeah, Isaiah Yemu. Isaiah Yemu. In the church. Like a Baja, ba, is it Baja Biamila, whatever he's called. <laughs> Baja Biamila was a Christian, but to become yeah. the speaker of the house, to become the speaker of the house of reps, he converted to Muslim. This is a sitting yeah. pastor carrying Bible yeah. every day, telling you about miracle. But in order to get now. In order to get elected as a dual governor, he had to convert to Islam. Look at him wearing the Fulani garb. Yeah. Do you know why he traveled to go and beg Fulani people? Because he knows that those people who are going to vote in Edo are not the ones to decide who is going to be governor. Those that decide who is going to be governor, they live in Sokoto, they live in Katsina, they live in Abuja, they are Fulani. They are the ones who are going to write the results. He went there to go and beg them. Did you see it? Ask yourself, why? Now, the reason I'm saying all these things is because it's a bit of a diversion, but I will say it is because our people need to understand not to allow themselves to be a willing tool for the enemy to use. I keep yeah. going back to the issue of Afonja and the Lauren, how the Yoruba, the Duduwa is lost a Lauren, so yeah. that people can learn from history. I go to the experience of the Hausa people, 
how the Hausa people lost their land to Emirates so that people can learn that your threats with the sabotage you're engaged in today the sabotage work you're doing to today you're doing today will ensure that your village becomes an emirate a hundred years down the line and when your village becomes an emirate they will not remember an ifule for an idiot like you and lastly let me say this to you a brother wrote to me yesterday you know what he said to me yeah. anything you're doing about biafra and bini is not a part of that biafra you're wasting your time this is somebody from from a doc writing to me saying that anything you're doing and you forget Bini as part of Biafra you're wasting your time that's what you said it's true. It's true. and I I, I I go back this morning to remind people that that name Igodo Migodo the key that unlocks the key is very very deep yeah. it's a very yeah. deep name and any day we understand it I believe that um Biafra will be at our doorstep thank you very much for calling Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. I remember blessed. Thank you very, very much. We have another caller on the line. This caller, can you hear me? Your name and where you're calling from, please. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. My you. name is Obni Emobin Debeze. I am from Ehala. Ehala is in Olo province, Biafra land. Right now, I'm calling you from, uh, from Liberia. Thank you very much. Thank God I had the opportunity of getting you online this morning. You're lucky. Thank God also for the work that you're doing for the whole humanity. If West African people are listening, I want them to listen and listen good. Because the work you're doing is not only for Biafra, but for the entire West African region. Yes. There is a grand star plan by the Fulani Janjaweeds to Islamize the entire West Africa to bring in their Wahhabist religious sect in West Africa. Nigeria is the most clean, the starting point. Next will be Ghana, and after Ghana will be Liberia, where I am residing now. Yes. As these countries and see the influx of the Fulanis everywhere here. If they think they cannot talk the president of Ghana, if he's listening or somebody that can take the message to him, if the president of Liberia is listening or somebody can take the message to him, if they cannot stop and start talking, if they cannot start talking about the Biafran freedom, they are doing it to themselves. Let them go to Burkina Faso now and know what is happening in Burkina Faso. Exactly. It is a starting point mm -hmm. because they see Nigeria, that is where the resources come from. Yes. And if they get the whole resources, to get the whole West Africa is at their fingertips before they get to Africa. God bless you. So, God bless you. One of the best scholars I've ever. God bless you. Go ahead. Yes. Is to restore the Afro to go to their meeting, their United Nations meeting, their OAU meeting, their West African Regional Ecowas meeting, and talk about restoration of Biafra, because that is the only salvation the whole West Africa and Africa will get. But if they fail to do it. The foreign is the Arab war which swallowed the whole West Africa. Thank you, my leader. Thank you, my leader. Thank it you. is really my leader brought you. Thank you very much, my dear brother. The problem that we have here in Liberia. What is it? I want to bring it to Is it IPOB so family? Is it IPOB no, family IPOB problem? Biafra, especially the call Igbo people. Yes. Once you hear that money is not being sent, sent to the rightful place that is supposed to be sent. It demoralizes the other people that want to pay their dues. There are three, two elements here that are in the habit of telling people that we have no connection with headquarters in Germany and we don't remit our money to them. Please, our leader, I want you to give the clarity about what is happening so that the people we have been trying to get more people here, even when our uh, eminent, the former leader that met you, the coordinator that met you in New York, Chuck Edwin, Yes. They scandalize, demoralize his name and want to break the him. But we stand true, stand strong. Thank God for the able coordinator that we have here now mm -hmm. that is carrying the affairs of IPOB so strong. IPOB Liberia is very strong and everybody must support it. They want strong. to bring to nothing all we are doing. No, they cannot succeed. They cannot succeed. And thank you very much, my dear brother. They can never ever succeed. Liberia is very strong. All of you must support our coordinator. We have West Africa coordinator anyway, and all that will be sorted. These things they are, they are bound to happen. The caller on the phone, can you hear me? 
I have a caller on the phone. Can this caller hear me? No. The caller on the line, can you hear me? No. The caller on the line, can you hear me? Your name and where you're calling from? Can you hear me for the last time? Can you hear me? Yes, your name and where you're calling from? Yes, my name is Sunday Kinakwe. I'm calling from Los Angeles. From Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. My leader, I shall be well with you. And you too. Right, right from the very first day I met you in the meeting in Los Angeles. Yes. I have handshake. I have handshake with you. Automatically, my life changed. You are a God sent. You are blessed. And then I call you my Lord. I always call you my Lord. Because you make me... I'm listening. We are listening. Please go ahead. We are listening. The whole world is listening. Go ahead. You make me feel and believe that you are God sent. My question this morning to you is is there any way that we can call our people like for example the the kings like we have from Ibaki mm -hmm. we have from uh, Umunede yes we have from Abo yes we have from uh, Igede yes we have from uh, all uh, we have from uh, Ibodo, we yes. have from uh, Ogashiku, yes. We have we have from uh, Ndiri, uh -huh. we, have, we have from uh, Embake, uh -huh. you know, from let's say from Ikodomi uh -huh. to uh, Enugu State, yes. I'll say to yeah. say to Ogoja, Ogoja, all the way to Ogoja, in fact, yes, all the way to here. Yeah, thank you. Is there any way that we can meet? those traditional rulers mm -hmm. those those uh kings we are doing so already but on the ground because if you do it in the open the governor will run to fulani and say will you give me vice president vice president fulani will say yes uh, then he will now go back and depose all those um people who are working with us we are doing it but in secret and in private um, I, I talk to traditional rulers i do i everywhere Cross River, Akwai Bomb, Edo, everywhere I talk to them. But it's in, this, in secret. Because once you make it open, you see, if I were we will go and say, oh, make me vice VPO. Once you make me VPA, I'll stop what uh, Namdekan and IPOB are doing, and I'll sack all those traditional rulers. If you bring them out in the open, all of them will be deposed the next day. That is the type of environment we are living in, but I'm talking to them. I can assure you, and 80% of them are with us. I, I, did you see the one sharing money at the home of Arthur? Is it? Did you see it? The one sharing yes. money. Yes, I saw the video. Are they are they also included in traditional rulers? <laughs> These are criminals. You see, that, that is what our people don't understand. When we speak the way we do, people deliberately misunderstand us. And the reason why it is easier to misunderstand and try to demonize what we are doing is because the brain of some black people are not advanced enough to appreciate what is called critical appraisal of their individual and collective performance. If I'm doing very badly and you advise me, I take it. It may come in any form and I will take it. But back home, it is not like that. If we try, if we try any attempt to gather them in the open, hey, they will not only send the army to bomb the place because Britain is there to cover up for them, what they would do is they'll say to the governors, go and sack all of them, and they'll be sacked. And look at the governors that we have. So that tells you all you need to know. So we are doing that but very, very um, um, secretly. We don't want people to know what we are doing. That is why Biafra is that is why IPOB is everywhere. We are all over the place. We are uncountable. We are all over the place. Every and as our brother said, we have what it takes to assume the governors say the zoo collapses precipitously tomorrow. We have what it takes to raise a government. We have what it takes to raise an army, to defend our land and also to govern it. And of course, not to govern, 
but to call for elections and organize our place properly because the people will always decide in the land of biafra the people are paramount the people will always decide and i thank you very much my dear brother for calling thank you very much from los angeles it must be very close to midnight in los angeles around about now the caller on the line can you hear me please this caller on the line can you hear me for the last time no the caller on the line from germany can you hear me no i can hear your line the caller on the line can you hear me no there is a noise Hello? At the back. yes your name and where you're calling from please oh good morning my leader good morning my name is adeola adeola yes yes i'm calling from dublin from dublin thank you uh -huh. very very much yes go ahead. adeola yeah. i yes i am not your leader before your people will start complaining that i'm taking over your land please you are there your your ududua is that correct yes i am ududua oh please your your <laughs> leaders are your your leaders are the very great man that i respect very much by the banjo uh akinto the um the um the uh what's it called again the alafin of all your the only of if uh eba gani adams and all the rest of them please uh you and i yeah. are brothers they are your leaders, please. Before they say I'm encroaching into into Oduduwa territory, which I'm not, of course. You are my brother. Please go ahead. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, I've been following you since 2014. Are you serious? And uh, yes, hey, you're yes, a man yes. following me since 2014. Uh, why yes, not? Are yes, you, I'm... Have you ever been upset with me to stop following me? Before? Yeah, well, in the, in the past, in the past, <laughs> I can assure you, sir. Um, I I wasn't um good good in good relationship with the Hebrew people. Wow. And I can remember when I was going to the university, an able person helped me with my admission. So, you know, I, the relationship wasn't there, but since 2014, when I started following you, I was like, no. You know, somebody that stands with the truth, somebody that knows the truth, that believes in the truth, you liberated me. That's why I called you my leader, because all these people you mentioned did not liberate me. You liberated me. You opened my eyes to a lot of things. So that is why I call Can you, you speak my leader. Yoruba? Can you speak Yoruba? Yes, of course I'm a Yoruba person. Speak Yoruba, <laughs> let me see. Say what you have just said now. Say it in Yoruba language, let me see. Okay, eka rosa, ba o ni bubu nkan sa, e se mu dupe o. Eh, lati bere wa ni o nso re pe lawon ibo. But nigba ti mo tin tele yin, eh e ti e ti la mi loju, e ti fun mi ni ominira, lati bon pe emi atawon ibo ore ni wa. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very yes, much. Sir. Right. Ma, ma, I would like to ask that before um, before the amalgamation of Nigeria, has there been any relationship between us and yourself like, that you know between the Yorubas and the Igbos? Do you know if there has been a sort of a relationship? Because I know that a lot of people are saying that even with the Bini, uh, then some of the Yoruba part and all of us, we've been together and all of that. But before now they had, i don't know about it but you know that if there's a relationship be between us in maybe 2000 and, uh, 1914 and all of that you know before the coming of nigeria do you are you aware of any relationship between us sir? The, what i do know is that as i said many times before there was a traditional ruler the traditional ruler of the kingdom of omo opera in my land yeah. he, i spoke to the man in 20 in 20 in 2009 Mm -hmm. And I spoke to him on the phone. He was telling me about the relationship between the Igbos and the Yoruba people. And I mm -hmm. asked him how. He said he went to a traditional rulers meeting, council meeting in Abuja. And he mm -hmm. was sat next to his, um, his um, Ekiti counterpart, another traditional ruler from Ekiti, from Ekiti state. Yes, from Ekiti. Um, Ekiti yes, Ekiti state. And apparently they have the same surname the same surname and the same meaning so we didn't pursue it any further and and but recently recently and i, I have also preached in the past before i go to what i want to say now the movement our people <clears throat> came from two areas there are the original ancient people who were in our land then when the israelites left egypt to travel to the land to to enter into the kingdom that god gave them with the land of israel some people came down through sudan they came down through sudan and through some through niger republic and into yoruba land yoruba territory that's the migration continued 
all the way into our land. Now, this another phase came through Ethiopia and all those. I mean, then they founded the kingdom of Biafra, which is Reverend Biafra, uh, according to history books. So the relationship is there. But if there were any formal exchange of emissaries, like emissary from one kingdom to the other, I do not know. I have not researched that hard. I have not gone there yet. But I believe, let me tell you this, I believe that the key lies in Edo State. I don't know why I strongly believe that there is something about Edo, something about Igodomi Godo, that is some, that is a relationship between the Igbos and the Yoruba people that will be found if we dig deeper. So it's not just for me, it's for everybody. We want everybody, every scholar, to go and keep digging deep into Bini Kingdom. How everything happened. Do you know why I'm saying this? Can you hear me? Is it there? You can hear me. Yes, the 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 um, the speaker the speaker went off. Do you know why I'm saying this? Okay. Do you know why I'm saying this? Yeah. Go on, sir. Because the the all the obis we have have a relationship with Bini Kingdom all the way to the Obi of Onisha. Mm. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And if if the if the establishment of the Bini Kingdom is as a result, as a consequence of Yoruba input, if Yoruba is responsible, which we all know historically responsible for Bini Kingdom, and Bini Kingdom, all the Ubis you have in our land, all the way to the Ubi of Onisha, they are the only ones that answer will be the rest answer Igwe or Eze. If there is a connection between the thrones that you have, the Ubi of our nature, the one in, in, uh, in Abo, and all the rest of them, all the way to the Oba of Benin, then there is a link. But as I said, it's something we are going to research very, very deeply and very, very heavily. But I think there is a link somewhere. And, and the Godomi Godo is the key. That key that opens the key is what will lead us to the truth. And as somebody commented now, uh, somebody was writing on my page right now that the, that he believed the reason why Biafra hasn't come yet is because the whole truth hasn't been revealed, and that yes, truth absolutely. is in those, that truth is going to be in Igodomi Godo. That key that opens the key is where yeah. the whole world is going to know the final truth, and then after that Biafra will come. I believe that very strong. Mm. Yes, I agree to sir. I agree to sir. I'm I'm so happy to to talk to you this morning, sir. I am because um, I've been calling for a very long time. <laughs> I said no. <laughs> to correct something, I, I, I'm a woman and I told my husband that um, I am going to Biafra because I'm tired of um, Nigeria and then um, <laughs> if it's not ready to go, I'm, I'm going. Is your husband a Biafra? Is your husband a Biafra? No, he's a Yoruba man. He's, he's a Yoruba man. And, and I told him I'm going and I'm going to tell Mazin Amikani to change my name to whatever name, Igbo name he chooses. If he, it's, he's not ready to go because I want to stand with the truth. Because know the truth and it shall set you free. It's true. That, that, that is it. That is what we need now. We need freedom. We, we've suffered for too long. Let me tell I, you. I took care of my parents. I took, I'm taking care of my children. Very Who's true. going to take care of me? It's true. It's, I mean, it, it is hard. So I, I, I'm, I'm going with Biafra if he doesn't mind. So that, <laughs> Thank you very much, brother, sister. And, and let me say something to you. Let yes. me say something to you again. Yes, sir. Um, why was it that when the british came they amalgamated the yorubas the duduwas and biafran people into one country first but we are one country sure. you know that before before yes yes absolutely uh, Oduduwa, the east and the west we are one country before the the north came in i don't know if you know that now yes, sir. if they were one country before the north came i, I keep asking myself mm -hmm. this question why didn't they i keep asking why didn't awo and zeke come together and and say to hell with this ginger witch from the north. I don't know what they did. I, I can't understand what they, maybe the, the whole truth hasn't been revealed. Maybe, as our brother said, the whole truth hasn't been revealed. And in the Godomi Godomi, we're going to find it. Thank you very much, my dear sister, for calling. Thank and you, for sir. Thank you, sir. And for the, I wouldn't say for the first time, but uh, yes, today, Yoruba language has been spoken on Radio Biafra to show that we are accommodating. We want everybody yeah, to be free. Right. Yes. I'm the first thing good. Yes, thank you very much, thank my dear sister. Thank you very, very much. We have a caller on the line. This caller, can you hear me? Your name and where you're calling from, please. The caller on the line, can you hear me? No, they cannot hear me. 
The caller on the line, can you hear me please? Your name and where you're calling us from? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Oh, women Good morning, have now taken over. Good morning to you, please. Your name and where yes, you're calling sir. from? My name is uh, Faith Ogala Adobe Biafra Queen. I'm an Agbo speaking uh, Biafra. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, I know you said last week who called last week should who call this week. Yes. But I have uh, something important to say. Go ahead. Uh, great one. Please, Thank you so much. Yes. Um, I'm calling from Italy and uh, Genova to be precisely. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some kind of things I would like uh, I would like you to to look into because there are some kind of people in Anioma, Anioma where I come from. Mm -hmm. They are uh, they um uh, constituting news as like kind of calling Anioma people to divide attention <laughs> from Biafra. Yes. They don't want people to follow up Biafra anymore or talk about IPOB because Oh, my DK, as you can see, like I always said in my broadcast, that I laid down my life to restore my country. 50% alive, 50% uh, in the other world. Mm -hmm. And why these 50% are with me? Because I want to use this 50% for restoration of Biafra and also to take care of my kids because I have two kids mm -hmm. who is so tender. Yes. They are still lit. now. That's why I keep this fifty percent. So anything that that has to do with Biafra restoration, I will go to any length, and I will. That is, I will do anything for Biafra restoration. So this thing is disturbing me too much since I had this thing, and since I know, even they blocked me in 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 uh, in uh, in the group that I was. Even the new one that they create for people not to talk about Biafra there or for people not to talk about IPOP there. When they know that the way I'm so stubborn and all that, they block me from that place. I know I don't want to review who blocked me on air because the person that blocks me know the himself. So what they are doing now that anybody in anybody, a Nyoma or Agbo, any a car speaking person that is in IPOB, they are calling these people to divide attention and to tell to tell the people because you know as a black people we are gullible we are blacks and you know we don't have that sense of of reason so people when they hear as a leader they hear some kind of things or also kind of a uh, uh, thing like some one of them called me and told me that you build an, a, a house in some in africa there like kind of like like kind of i shouldn't criticize the pig I shouldn't criticize that the man that is leading me is he owns he owns an apartment that you you build a house in one of Africa. <laughs> then, I, then I told him I said if you build a house like what I respond to that person mm -hmm. I said if you build a house there is nothing bad in it because the last time I checked you don't have a home in contraction called Nigeria because they come to kill you and destroy your home. So if you and you can't even go for now because if now and if you want to feel like Africa or anything you want to feel uh, you know africa because when we live in another man country sometimes we feel like going to africa it's not like me now that rejected country to go now like on call nigeria i will totally let, reject my, my dear sister people. because others are waiting also i want you to yes, listen sir. listen so, listen very so carefully no, don't that. worry no, but don't worry listen listen please don't worry that. listen listen to me let me respond yes, to what sir. you just said do you know the actress? I have another you, to say, sir. I'm, I'm coming. We'll get to that in a minute. Yes, sir. Do you yes, know sir. the actress? I want to deal with the Anioma issue and people trying to deceive themselves. Do you know the, mm -hmm. uh, the actress called um, Stella Damasos? Or Damascus? Yes. Do you know her Damascus, real name? Sir. Do you know her real name? No, no. Do you think Damascus or Damasos is her name? Or is it Damascus? No, name? yes, I think so because that was what I know when I was, you know. I know the name. When we're I know her up. name like that. Mm. Yes. Her son name is Ojuku. Her name is Stella Ojuku, not Damasus. My God. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's number one. So there is nothing like Anyoma. Anyoma is a name as you have um, as you have um, uh, maybe Jekebe or Wawa, but there is Ibu. Mm. Uh, do you know? Do you know why they changed their name to Damasus? Was during the war. They didn't want to be killed. 
when the Fulanese were coming in, the Janjaweed, the second army led by Motala Mohammed was sweeping through the whole place and killing people. They asked them, what is their name? They said their name is Damasus. It's not Ujubu, because they felt they would be killed. Are you aware of that? Hmm. My God. Now, no, sir. I'm coming again. Let me tell you why these people fathered by the Janja would do what they're doing. Do you know a musician called Bongos Ikwe? Do you know Bongos Ikwe? Have you heard of that name before? I don't know how young you are, but I used to listen to his music. Do you know a man called Bongos Ikwe? Mm -hmm. No, maybe when I see, listen to go, the music, I will go the and name Google I it. He was a very big, big, very, very big uh, musician, Bongos Ikwe. Do you know Bongos. Babangida's wife called Miriam Babangida? Yes, I know. Now late. I know. Do you know yes, her real I name? Know. Do you know her real name? No, no. Her real name is Ndidi. Her real name is what? Ndidi. Ndidi. My God. Ndidi is from my place also. Good. I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I, I want to let people understand what they don't know today. My Ndidi God. is her Ndidi. name. Do you know how she became Babangida's wife? No, sir. I don't know. She was a <laughs> trophy of war. She was captured, not captured. Babangida took Ndidi away from Bongos Ikwe. Bongos Ikwe is the real husband that paid her bad price and married her. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Babangida took Ndidi by force and married mm -hmm. her by force. Are you listening to yeah. me very carefully? It, I heard this, yes, yes, I remember. It's true, Radio Biafra, yeah. I know all good, this. Good, good. As, as a booty of war. Mm, mm. Good, good. Now, when the Fulanese were sweeping through Anyoma and killing people as a result of the war, mm. most of them turned into cowards, lily livered cowards. People like, you I see Loretta Onot here, the sex trafficker. That sex, tra yes, that yes. human trafficker. She used to move mm. prostitutes from uh, from from the zoo to to mm. Italy. That was her job mm -hmm. before she mm. she got she, she got her new position with the with the zoo presidency. Mm. So people like that, their brain their brain became reformatted to see mm. Fulani as their all and all as people they are going to serve. Let me also tell you one thing. I now know the reason why some of us serve the Fulani and are fo as foolish as we are. You know that the Fulani sleep with their cow before they sell them to us. Are you aware of that? I'm not seeing them. I'm not seeing it to, to the zoo that they should boycott uh, Fulani. Exactly. Cow. Fulani, Fulani, Fulani yeah. dominate and kill. They have sex. A man will ejaculate into an animal and that cow mm. is sold to Igbo people they cut it up and they eat it oh my god now there is one that even gave birth to half human being half of, of, of course uh, of course uh, yes of course that is what is happening that our people do not know that is the stranglehold the fallen is mm. have over some of them so when you see a sabotu a bit from a neoma bit from anywhere a sabo will always one is either fathered by a fallen man now imagine now listen imagine that babangida had just called um, um didi to the uh, officer's mess slept with her impregnated her and sent her back to bongo sikwe she will give birth mm. to a child for bongo sikwe not knowing it is babangida's baby hmm. do you understand that is that was yeah. how some of these idiots we are born in our land okay. and that is okay. how you know a sabotua that is how you know them they are either fathered by the Fulani or their family worked for them and will mm. continue to work for them or out of cowardice during the war they renounced Biafra they say oh Biafra or Yuda or, or Nigeria choose one once you say Biafra they shoot okay. you dead so they so are let me quickly say, use this uh, platform to let me quickly use this platform to send a message to all my Agbo people, my Ika people, please, I want you people to understand anybody that called you and start telling you lies and all that, that you came in today, you just came in to join IPOB, you don't know what is on that IPOB, please hang up the phone on them because they are traitors and they want to divide your attention from the real truth and the, because the only way is IPOB, the only way is Mazinam Dikanu, the only savior we got, please do not 
not miss out because if you miss out, you will live to regret this. Please, oh, Madika, another thing again, I would love to uh, uh, talk to you private if you can call me after your broadcast and anytime you have a chance, just call me, please, oh, Madika, because I have one of this program and because I, I have about over nearly 6,000 um, calls, uh, missed calls here. Yes. So just send me a message and i will call you okay. back immediately thank you okay. very very much for that my dear sister thank you very much i have a caller on the line i've picked your call stay where you are please the caller on the line i've picked your call please stay where you are i'll come back to you in a minute that's something that i want to address i only have one house in my name in england that i bought in the year 2001 it is there in the land registry i bought it in 2001 i won't give you the address but anybody who knows the land registry in the UK can go there to have a look. That is the only house that I have in my name anywhere in the whole world. In the whole world, that's the only place I have my name. I stay in my father's house in the village because I have more than enough accommodation. I am not a gluten. I don't suffer from avarice. I don't suffer from... What can I call it? Um, insatiable accumulation of wealth. It has one bedroom. And that bed on it can take me and my wife who can sleep comfortably on it. My children have their own rooms. So I have no need for a property anywhere. And I will never... You see, these are the lies because they know that your minds, you people are so flimsy. You can be convinced very easily. That is why they keep churning out all this rubbish. Ask them to go and pro produce or provide the deed of anywhere they claim that I own a property anywhere in the world. You see, it's a lie. It's because they know that we are paying our consultants huge amount of money. So they are thinking, hey, once you, pay. you know, a zoo, an animal in the zoo, once your budget is a million naira every year and you are the controller of that budget, the money doesn't belong to you, you think you're entitled to about 800,000 of it. So that is why, or that is how they think that I am. I am not that way and can never be. People give me money and I put it into IPOB. They do. Privately, they do. They say, support yourself with this, and I put it into IPOB. They say, oh, which I, I think there are, if I ask people now, people that come to me and say, which account should we pay money into? I want this money to come to you. I give them the German account number, or the one we have in the US, to pay it in there. Because I have no need for money. My reward comes when Biafra comes. When Biafra comes, I'm sure that um, uh, Biafrans will build a place for me to live in, if they want to. But my father's house is there. That is upstairs, so what am I looking for again? What else do I need? All I want is Biafra. So all this stupid side talk is just garbage. Garbage, utter nonsense. They know that the mind of a black man is so tiny, so small. They won't tell you about your governors and your ministers looting billions. They won't tell you about that lady called Sadia that told you he fed all of you with 850 billion. No, all their houses in Dubai, their hospitals, those that stole money that was meant for Igwo Chainuku Expressway, they will not go after them. Isn't Namde Khan, who's not a politician? I don't control any office, but of course we respect it. We are very popular. And they're very jealous and they can never be like us. How can they be? And the more they yap and gossip about us, the more the world knows about us. Nobody knows them. It is us that they know. So you shouldn't be unduly worried. But here we preach the truth. And that truth we are going to continue preaching. As I said earlier, I have a caller on the line. They've been waiting. This caller, give us your name and where you're calling us from, please. My name is a former Onyejiaka, known as Asapaus. I'm from Oka. I live in London. Thank you very much. I have no question. Go ahead. Okay, I have no question to ask you, but what I'm saying is that may God Almighty bless you. My elder sister is a strong IPOP member in London here with Ozoka. Mm -hmm. And he said he will she will never go to Nigeria. He will never set her foot into Nigeria unless Biafra comes. And he has made it clear to everybody. Nobody tries to get her to come back to Nigeria. He said never it will never happen Wonderful. i have no question like i said the only thing i'm saying we are here together we are in this struggle together whatever that comes with biafra i am in if biafra to 
go for war today, I will leave this country to go back to fight for Biafra because my head is full. When I think of what is happening in Biafra land, it makes me go mental ill and I don't want to take it anymore. My, I call you my lord anyway I talk about Namde Kano. I am with you. We are with you. Uzoka said he would never leave to see anything happen to you and he will make sure that Biafra comes and we stand by that. Yes, I am so strong and I am so strong. We can never leave. I am so happy today to speak to you. I have been trying since Uzoka sent these messages to me. I have been always trying but sometimes work never allowed me and I'm so glad today I, speak, I spoke to you face to face um, on the phone i am so happy and i will continue we will continue in this struggle we will continue and be from will definitely yes, come sir. in jesus name yes, thank you so much for everything thank you thank you so much thank you my dear sister he said he said he said we have another caller on the line but of course ozoka is one of us he's a hardcore so he's he is one of us I ask you to check the clip and the video of when we went to the EU. He is one of us. Hardcore, 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 one of us. The caller on the line, can you hear me? The lines have crashed once again, but let's try and see. The caller on the line, can you hear me? I have a caller on the line, can you hear me? This person calls and he doesn't say anything. Plus three three six zero four zero seven zero one eight two. Can you hear me? He's not saying anything. Very sad indeed. Or maybe the line has crashed. The line has crashed once again. Let us try again. The caller on the line. Can you hear me? Please, your name and where you're calling from, please. My name is Chupu Chupu. I'm calling from uh, Germany. Where in Germany are you? Which city are you in Germany? Right now in Munsterland. Please raise your voice. We are listening. Thank you. Chukuka, thank you. Raise your voice and uh, proceed. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a leader. I'm from uh, Ezuku uh, in Ben, local government, Adia State, in Gafra land. Thank you. Yeah, my leader. Thank you for this opportunity. And uh, God bless you for the effort because it's a different thing to be called and uh, it's a different thing to stand up and say how we do it. Yeah, God bless you for standing up for us and to be speaking for us and fighting for us. We are behind you. Yeah. Thank you. Please, I want, to, I want to make this point. Last uh, session you had, you said you need 100,000 people like you no, 100, oh, not 100,000, 100, 100, yes. Yeah. And I've not found up to, up to, yeah. I have not found up to 15. Yeah, yeah. I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. Yeah, look, in the Bible, either Elisha or Elijah said that to God when he was having problem with Jezebel and Ahab, that should be. He said to God, I am the only person left remaining in the Israel that has no bad to bow. God said, no, go back. I have about 200,000, 200 people. There are so many people who are still worshipping me. I want to tell you this. Even the politicians, the politicians who are there, who are there struggling, if you check their comments, they will say, hey, if you don't give us presidency, we will join them the Carlo. They are part of you. Only that what they ate is on their neck. What they ate, the hook is on their neck. The hook, what they, what they ate. Some of them we have videoed. Naked. Some of you have videoed. I won't serve the politician. So I, what I'm telling you is out of what I know. They know some other things that they, they were recorded that they can't openly say, hey, I'm, I'm a Biafra, I'm a this, that, because they will be leaked with what they did. Some of them, they only have been found where they went and looked and studied, and they said, hey, if you talk, I will do this to you. I want to tell you this. We, we have, we have one, what, one million Biafrans. Dear France, who are ready? Watch what happened in your house. People died. What happened in our, uh, in our barrister's place? People died. What happened in the uh, Aba Umay Road? People died. Yet, people are still standing. You have murder. What I want to tell you is that don't look, don't, don't start be looking at uh, people, the saboteurs, and the, the flip. They must surely be there. Even if they have tomorrow, you They will still be there, of course. They will have, they will have, uh, foreign agencies will have spies now. Everybody, you have Biafrans who are spies for foreign agencies. 
Of course, Thank even you. for 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 Janja weed. There be spies. Yes. So my leader, I want to tell you this because I always follow you and I always listen to you. And what let me tell you, and that thing, it's not a profession that makes me to follow you. I only see what I see through you. You are woman, but God is talking through you. Because if when you are human, you, you, sometimes you will say certain things that people will say, ah, he's making himself God. Or he makes, if you are a human, people must surely make a mistake. Or must surely say something that is not on the line or right beyond the logic. Yes? But the main thing is that you preach the truth. And that's why everybody is following you. Even the people who are police about what, they know the truth. Only that hunger. Hunger. And I put logo, we call it Ogoloka uh, truth. So, yes. my leader, please. Please, any day you want to stand up and move, don't look back. You don't be yeah. scared. People and it's coming. That, that time is yeah. coming. The it's Lord coming. God, the Lord God, Chukum God, is with you. And uh, please, one more thing. I want to tell you this. When you do the child, I, I, when you talk about Sabo, the pretend and all those things, I, I said, uh, Sha, you have energy. I don't invest my energy talking about my enemies. Who you, I, why would I talk about them? You, I'm a Christian. God says uh, uh, in their presence, you should make my banquet table. So they have to be there. I pray to have them. Because when I have I have them. <laughs> 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 yeah. He told me, he said that in their presence, you will make my banquet table. Of course. Table. Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 23. Yeah. He prepared a table before my enemies. Enemies. And my cup floweth over. You know what that means? Yeah. The blessing is too much, of course. It's you too know much. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if you don't have an enemy, if you don't have an enemy, there will be no ce uh, celebration. If you don't have enemies, the, there will be no celebration. So, we don't have any enemies. Some of these idiots, they don't even exist. Some of these fools. Thank if you. there's something I'm going to publish, do you know that, that Russia contracted some Ghanaian people to set up, um, to set up um, um, uh, what I call social media war room in Accra? pretending that the Americans, fighting fellow Americans, Republicans and Democrats. Are you aware of that? I have the clip, I'll show it. So some of these ideas, some of these names don't exist. They paid people in Israel, they paid some in Russia to be churning out all this rubbish, some of them with Biafran names, to, to give the impression, because they know that, you know, blacks are a bit foolish. Once you say, they say, oh, maybe people are not, but of course we know that 100% percent including even some saboteurs we know they are all praying for Biafra to come through IPOB through yeah. Namdekano they are, and they tell me people come I hold meetings and they tell me that even sabo some of them are very jealous because they are not as popular as we are some of them are as jealous because people don't love them the way they love me some of them are jealous because no matter how hard they try they can never be us we are chosen we are special anything we touch turns into gold if that doesn't attract did did Moses not attract him enemies and jealousy? Uh, there are so many. So many. And then who am I? Oh, okay. Even so even Yeshua that came, even Yeshua that came, uh, yeah. you know, was a good man. Did nothing wrong. Did anything? Yeah. Uh, did they not hate him? Did did Judas, one of his disciples, followers, not betray him? Okay. Eh? okay. Talk less of myself. Who is a man? Please. Are you, are you, are Let us uh, have a break. Jesus Christ have the uh, only only two, uh, two disciples, and he has one. As somebody said, these are computer generated abokis and so they don't exist. Most of them don't easy generation. They go and they key in on the computer. They pick one name, they keep go to their profile pictures, go and check them. If it is somebody like um, Loretta on I can understand. Because from time, from before the war, these are people that were abused by Fulani soldiers during the war. These are victims of rape during the war, and they were converted into serving Fulani. That is the way. That's the way it is. Because you cannot come and, uh, as a man, as a grown-up man, you go to the north. The gas will go to. I put a target boxer shot. Won't keep you They 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 you in the north. After that, they give you governor. Why would you be loyal to them? Because as you said, if you make noise, they they bring out the picture of you and one Omaru like that in a hotel in Sokoto. Why they were useless in you? So you understand, this is just about to be there. And I thank you very much, my dear brother, for the perspective you have brought to our program this very morning. Thank you very much. Somebody saying we should stay here until 12. And I'm thinking, no, it's, it's not going to be possible. It is not possible. We have another caller on the line. This caller, can you hear me? Your name and where you're calling from, please, if you may. I, I have a caller on the phone. This caller, can you hear me? 
No, they can't. I have another caller on the phone. Can this caller hear me? You can hear me, please. Give us your name and where you're calling from, please. This this is this is absolutely crazy. It is not working. Our lines are once again jammed. We are going over to Skype. Once it does this, what I do is I turn it off. And then let us try and see if it will work. The color on the... F oh my goodness. Unbelievable. They cannot, they cannot follow up. It is not possible. Not possible. Not possible. Not possible. Let us see again. Yes. Can you hear me? The color on the line. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good Please. morning. Good morning to you. Your name and where you're calling from? Yeah. Okay. My name is uh, PCS Aso. I'm living in Warsaw, Poland. I'm in economics. Oh, you're an economist in, in oh. Warsaw, in Poland. Are you part of our family? Because we want to open the family business. Open it, please. Doctors. Open it. Open it, okay. please. Yes. Yeah, because we are organizing it with uh, some doctors. Wonderful. In uh, Warsaw, in Poland. I'm Wonderful. I'm thankful to meet you, and I've uh, been calling for a long time <laughs> because we want to register it in Warsaw. But I've been calling, be calling, be calling. I won't get to you. I thank you for what you are doing. And uh, I want God to bless you for what you are doing. And the only thing I want to say this morning, I'm happy that you are alive for us and be telling us the truth and be preaching the truth. And the truth will set us free. And people who doesn't want to hear, they will hear. The people who doesn't want to understand, they will understand. That is the only thing, because you are the only person who is enlightening us to tell us what is going on in that contraption called Nigeria. Because we doesn't know. People there doesn't know. We are the ones who are making that place to be vibrant. A lot of people are saying that, oh, this and that, that and this. Oh, you does not know what you are saying. Please <laughs> write down. Continue. We don't know what you are saying. That their fathers were there and Babangida took Ndidi from, uh, from Bongo Sikwe, took her to Dodan Barracks, uh, took her to Mina until she died. Okay. Useless, yes. useless niggas and who cannot listen very yeah, well. And the this one thing again I want to black. say about a place called Igodomi Igodo. Please go ahead. Please. Because my grandfather is almost 94 years. And he told me that there is something they call Aga Idu no Oba. Chief wow. Omwaru. Omwaru. Obosi. On nature. He didn't all of them is from that egodomi ego. Stop there. Stop there. Because I yeah. spoke to, to Benjamin Imadubuku the other day and he yeah. was telling me, this was the person that I uh, I went to prison with. And he was yeah. telling me that he was laughing and telling me that is something he wanted to tell me before, but he doesn't know how to say it. I said, what is it? He said, do you know that Ihiala is from Edo? Igodomi Igodomi. Yeah, because I'm from Ehala, I'm from Umwez. Ah, you, you see, this. you see. I'm from Ehala. Uru, we call Uru, Abo, all this place, Abo, we are from there, from Igodomi, Igodo, from that Bini city. That is from that Igodomi, Igodo. That is where, if you see, that's why I am a Wegu Amara. We dance Amara, we dance sword. You see that Abo of Bini are holding. That is what we are using to dance. And one thing again, the fight, the war, drove people from that place to settle us. In those areas, you see now, they're called Ehala, Ozobolo, Newi. That is where all those people came from. They call it Aga Idu, no Oba. Hmm. That is the fight. Oh, between the Idu and Oba people. Oba, Oba, that is Idu, my no Oba. Idu, no Oba. Aga Idu, no Oba. The war Oba, between Idu, Idu people no. and the Oba. Oba people, that is it. That is those people that Oba, Oba Benin who came drive the do people, the, 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 the people who own the land. Because if my grandfather, if my grandfather want to pray, we say Chukwe, Chukwe Biama, Chukwe, and my village is Omoa Chuku. You see, my own village is from Omoa Chuku, and means that they are children of God. That's why we have to look into that Igodomi Igodo. We 
we have to see. It is the key. It is, is the key. Here. I believe it is, it is the key. Because that is, yeah, that is where they drove everybody away. That is where the killings comes. Everybody running away, start scattering and going to deep to uh, Abia State, Imo State. That is where because that place is the place on each other go away. Because if you've seen that on each Ubo, um, Ubo and Sava, all those places, and they have that Igbo's name, but they are denying they are not Igbo. I don't even understand why they think it's like that. That is one thing I am happy that you are enlightening us and they're telling us what is happening. And another thing I want to say, why all these people rose up against you? Do you know that? No. It's because of they don't know you. And after the lockdown, what you did, you now bring food to give every community in Biafran land. That is where the jealousy starts. <laughs> <laughs> From the palliative, I shared people. That is, that, is where the, that is where the jealousy starts. Because they never knew. They didn't see it coming. And they never think about it. And after they see that, that is where you see that Nigerian government and the saboteurs, they start coming up and start doing all this rubbish they are doing. <laughs> I don't even think they know what they are doing. Because they don't know how many we are. We are many, we are uncountable. They can't stop us. That is what they I want to tell you this morning. Thank you very much for, for giving us this um the the e here lapa. This aga you do no ba. And you do not ba. Yeah, was where a lot of things started from. And you see slowly we are now opening that key. Do you see that key? Anybody you ask that question, you will know. Agi do no ba. Agi do no ba. Any old person knows this. Agi do no ba. Agi do no ba. It happens. That is where we scatter. That is where the problem is. That's why we doesn't look back again there. Seeing our brothers living there, that's why we didn't look back and leave them. Like but, but what I'm asking is, why was it that all our, we had historians, all these great historians, professor this, professor that, why couldn't they do what we, uh, mere mortals, are, are doing today? You and I, our, our sisters, uh, our brothers from, from, from Ikudomi Kudoland, why is it that our people that went before us, why couldn't they do this very thing that we're doing today? Yeah, because I have I have an uncle. My uncle is living in a in a, a in a like a, a, a Abo side. And Abo, you know, if these kids come, my my nephew, if the, my cousins, they come back, they will be talking that oh, one of our one, they are not our brothers. They are not our brothers. But they are speaking Igbo. But they would be staying in this way. One of our one, one of our. It was what the foreigners told them after the war, yes. after their conquest. Because you know, after the conquest. Yes, the conquest. Right. Yes. No. Yeah, they are, they are doing that, but now they are realize that we are the same. We are speaking the same language. So somebody wrote here, Onisha Ado Naidu. Is that correct? Well, yes. Does that make any sense to anybody? Onisha Ado Naidu. Yes. Onisha. Onisha Ado. Onisha Ado is. Onisha Ado. Yes, now Onisha Ado is from there. Oh Only I came from there. Oh, oh, as I came from there, I have a, I have a book. Hmm. All of them came to the same place. Let them not think that because Ohimiri, Ohimiri Niger, Ohimiri, Ohimiri Ghana, we are one. Ohimiri is one. Yes, Ohimiri is one. A river that swallows a river. And there's another thing. Yes. Let me tell you. Let me tell our. Hold on, my dear, but I want to tell people this very funny story. It's not funny. It's actually true. Do you know I am from Ibeku? And Ibeku people do not fight on half your people. On half your people do not fight Ibeku people. So I was asking uh, the elders, why is that the case? You see where we have the the tower today in Omaya, which is like the central place. Where you have the post office in Omaya, tower, that tower. That was where in, in fact at uh, or the Daniel we call it, that was where or half their people camped on their way to where they are living today. Ibeku hosted them. So I kept asking them, where did this or half people, where are they coming from? They said they are coming from uh, present day Delta, from Anioma, they are coming from there. But nobody, I, and I've been searching and I'm asking, where is it that or half their came from? From where? From where? It is only, even somebody is now writing now, that or half their people came from Idu as well. But, 
But the reason why I know is because Ohafia camped in Ibeku before they continued. So if you listen to Ohafia war dance when they are singing their song, you will hear about the relationship between Ohafia and Ibeku that they are one. And the reason why they will say that Ohafia and Ibeku are one was because Ibeku hosted Ohafia, housed them there before they moved on to go and meet the Jagan people and fought their way in to settle where Ohafia is today. So they are warriors. So what I'm thinking is, is it, is Ohafia not the remnants of the Idu warriors that maybe yeah, lost out yeah. to the Oba and that migrated down to our side? Thank you very much. That, that, that is the same people. And one thing I want to tell you again about Onicha people, Onicha people never call you, they will call you Mooni Igbo. They are calling me Mooni Igbo. You understand what is going on now? Yeah, I do. They are calling us Mooni Igbo. They, are, they, are, they say that they are not an Igbo, that they are Mooni Igbo. They are, that is what they are doing. But now the narrative start changing. Mm. The narrative starts changing. Yeah, but before, one Igbo, if you get any more, if you went to on a inside indigen, you are one Igbo. You are not an they will call you one Igbo. They will not call themselves an Igbo. They call themselves as on a The same way this on and Oma and all these people are doing, that is the same way they are still doing. But now the narrative have already changed. Now, but I will tell you why. I will tell you why. Because okay. as I said before, yeah. and I keep saying it, any day our people understand this then we are home and dry. There are there were ancient people living there who are called the Igbo people. The rest are migrants. There were ancient people in Igbo, they were living there already. As I have explained time and time and time again, and then the rest came. But in a manner of speaking, we are all Igbo people. And I will tell you why we are Igbo people. The same thing happened to the house of Israel. And any time I am lost or anything, I go back to the scriptures and I keep studying and I keep researching and the inspiration will come. Do you understand? Do you know the reason why they call Israel as Jews all over the world? Yeah. They call everybody is a Jew. The reason why everybody is a Jew was because Judea had special blessing from God. And Judea brought the brother Benjamin, the little brother Benjamin. And God said in the house of Judea will the capital emerge from, which is Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yeah. Now, yeah. as a result of how popular Jews, um, the house of Judah was and the blessing they received, everybody, yeah. including those in Samaria, you know Samaria is the north, including those, yeah. remember that after the death of Solomon, they said to your tent, O yeah. Israel, so the land divided into yeah. two, the northern kingdom and the yeah. southern kingdom, the northern kingdom started to worship Baal, the, the, the north said they wanted to, rec I, I'm trying to tell them the Omena Allah, all these people, I just want to give them this very simple analogy. Yeah, now, them. Uh, just a simple enlightenment, uh, we're not quarreling with anybody, just enlightenment when yeah. after the death of solomon and they said to your tent o israel and the kingdom divided into two the north and the south now listen to this jealous here you know we have a lot in common with with israelites the same behavior now those in the north said how can we be coming to the south all the time coming to the house of the lord to bring uh, booty to bring cow to bring goat to bring sheep to be sacrificing why don't we build our own in the north see that jealousy came in why don't we also build our own in the north now what did they do they went and molded golden calves do you remember they went and molded the golden calf in the north. So they now said to the Samarians, why don't you go to our own place? Don't go to Jerusalem. They, you are making the house of Judea very big. By going to Jerusalem, you are authenticating the, the hold that the house of Judea has upon everybody. And now the northern kingdom fell. But no matter how many times that Jerusalem fell in the house of Judah, there was always a way to rebuild it. People kept coming, regardless. To tell people that when you are blessed, the same way that the land of Biafra is blessed, the when you are blessed by God, there is nothing man can do to take it away from you. So no matter, despite all the jealousy and envy from the northern kingdom against the, the, the against Judea, eventually, eventually, when when the babylonians came and took them yeah. into slavery finally that they now recreated in 1948 
everybody became a Jew. They no longer ask you if you're from the northern kingdom or from the southern kingdom. They don't want to know if you're from the house of um, of um, of uh, Manasseh, if you're from the house of um, Ephraim, if you're from the house of uh, of whoever. All of you are now Jews, which derive from the word Judea. Judea. Do you understand? The same thing with Hebrew. With same thing with Hebrew. The Hebrews are blessed. They are highly, highly blessed. Whoever comes to them must adopt their identity and their name. If you come to them, that is the reason why everybody, everybody became Igbo. Everybody, if you migrated from, from, from Egypt all the way down, if you migrated coming from the Afar region of Ethiopia through the Cameroons, the, the mother and all the way down, once you enter that land, once the influence of that land is upon you, you become Igbo. That's what I want people to understand. The same thing that happened okay, to Israel yeah, and to Judea. Let me, let me give you one contribution again. I'm sorry, please. Uh, do, there is one thing I want to say. Igbos are very, very intellectual people, but there is one thing they lack into. Look at what our people are doing. When we go to North and go and build a house, build a hotel, build a plaza, build mansions, do estate, develop their place. Look at what our Igwe or chiefs are doing to us. To them to bring the people to develop the village, they went to go and bring the cattle rarers and give them land, sell land 100,000 to them, to them to be living in our land mm -hmm. and live to bring the people who will develop our place. My brother, you see, my dad is there. if, you, if you think about it, you go mad. This thing you're saying now, if you sit down and you think about it, you will go mad. We live in our towns, we, we live our I'm land. And go and build hotel in Jalingo. Then a Janja Wood from Jalingo will now come to our village and take over our village. And no, I'm thinking, no, he want to. Uh, no, the thing, the thing, the way the thing look like is like he want to come and start a business. He bring cattle and build tents. There is no development, and we are developing their place, and they are conquering us in a way. And our chiefs are doing this. Is 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 quite is quite is astonishing. Quiet. No, very 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 sad indeed my dear brother thank i you very much. i thank you, you for your much. call i thank you for thank your you call you're much. very kind i thank you and uh, god we bless you for that and the work you are doing please continue he the said, strategies you are using is very, very of course <laughs> and that is what god ordained <laughs> i'm very very happy to speak with you this morning thank you my thank you very much and poland should be very very strong we have doctors with the color on the phone can you hear me Hello, uh, yes. good morning. Good morning. Here, Marzi. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, this is uh, uh, Ken Patrick Dike, yes. and I'm calling from Italy. Italy, thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah, so, yeah, Marzi, thank you very much for your effort. Uh, you really dedicated enough time for our people. Uh, this your question and answer program is another opportunity for our people to interact with you directly, which yes. is a uh, which is the leadership that is lacking in the zoo, first of all, is the same leadership that is lacking in every other person that is claiming to be a Biafran um, agitator. Leader. There is no other leader that holds conversation with their people on a weekly basis. You know, so it goes a long way. Why is it that people are following you? Because you listen to them, you interact with them. Majority of the people today who are jumping left right and center like monkeys does not even give opportunity for interaction. Even when you counter them on Facebook or social media, they block you because you have a divergent view. So, Marzi, thank you for your humility. Thank you for your disposition to our people. And um, I also want to, uh, you know, tell you that. The people forget about the few fools. Forget about the few enemies. The one the enemies. We see them every day. They come on Facebook to come and try to tarnish your image. They want to tell us that you are a scammer. They say all <laughs> sort of things without even any evidence to show for it. And uh, you know, for me. The more they try to rubbish your name, the more they promote you. You know, so I, know. Marzi, I want to, I want you to know that your armies are on standby. People are waiting. Your armies are waiting for your command. Not the joke. Not the joke. You know, so all the people that are trying to detract, uh, you know, the movement and the things you are doing, are being eaten up in, with envy and jealousy. 
envy and jealousy. Because they cannot do what you are doing. They can't even hold simple conversations. You know, so I'm from Anioma myself. I heard my sister who called in and uh, yes. talked about the people of Anioma in Delta State. Yes. I want, you know, I always told people, the, the, my struggle for Biafra restoration is to correct the mistakes of my grandfather, who is the father of my mom, who is from Asia, in a Delta state. Wow. Because I can send from a Delta to Delta, my dad married an Asian woman. And today I'm a normal person, I, I, but I have my lineage in, in Asia, in a Delta state. Yes. And during the Civil War, my own grandfather, which is the father of my mom, mm -hmm. had to reach a pact, a kind of um, a kind of agreement mm -hmm. with the king of Ubuluku to make sure that the Biafran soldiers do not, you know, harm or the Biafrans do not harm her daughter because she was on the side of the Nigerian uh, forces. So there was this Obolowea, Obolo, say that Obolo, Obolowea. Sorry, Obolowea. 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 So there is Obolowea in Delta State. Listen, there is Obolowea in Delta State and there is Obolowea in Isuzo in Anambra. Can you hear that? Exactly what we are saying. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. On this side, Obolowea, you have on the Chuku. You yeah. have on the Chuku. Inside the Buluku, you have uh, 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 you, you have you have you have uh, Abon Ta, you have Abon Tumu Ozoma. Hmm. These are all Igbo names. Unbelievable. In Ubuluku, we have the AK market, we have the Afo market, we have the Uko market, and we have the Orie market. The AK market is the major market we have in Ubuluku. The AK is the general market, the bigger market where people from all over the place come every four days for trading. But other market days are little, little, my, uh, you know, just little market days. Yes, the AK is the major market. Yes. The one baffle that makes me just laugh is that. Today, they are telling us that we are no longer Igbos. To the point that even some of Ubuluku people don't even see themselves as Igbos because they were brainwashed. No, no, no. Believe that they are but, not but, 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 but what I'm asking is, the, the question that I, I want to ask is this. But there is Ubulo Isiuzo. I Ubulo Isiuzo in Ihiala in Anambra State. You are answering Obolo. Somebody uh, uh, somewhere else is answering the same Obolo. And you say you're not related. I, 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 these people are sick in the brain. They are sick. They are sick. They are. Oh my word. I, I, I can't help them. Thank you, my dear brother, very much for calling. The caller on the line, can you hear me, please? Your name and where you're calling from. Hello? Yes, please. Your name and where you're calling from, please. Okay, my name is James Ndukwe. I'm calling from Stockholm, Sweden. Stockholm in Sweden. Are you part of IPOB in Sweden? Yes. Wonderful. Because when they hear, when, when, if we hear these things, they go crazy. IPOB is in Ecuador, it is in Venezuela, in Brazil, in Sweden, it is in Uganda, it's in Tanzania. It, when Sabo hear this thing, they want to go, they want to drink that cement and the, die. That was the way the children of Israel were scattered. And a time came, they came back together. That is true. That is true. Go ahead, my dear brother. Go ahead. Well, listen. Go ahead. You are the Moses of our time. Shall be well with you. And I want you to remember, and when Moses and the Israelites got to the Red Sea, you see there are people who turn to Moses when 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 he has not commanded the Red Sea to depart. Yes. They they told Moses, Why have you brought us here to kill us? Why don't you us to die in this day? <laughs> Exactly what behavior, Igbo. <laughs> That's their behavior. Biafra, that is the way they are. <laughs> that is why this Efulefus, that is why this Efulefus, they are the people now saying he wants to kill us, he wants to kill you. Not Sorry, my dear. There's also Obuli Hedjo for in Imo State. There's, there is Obulu Ubu in Delta, Obuli Suzo in Anambra, Obuli Hedjo for in Imo State. We are one people. Please go ahead. Go ahead. So, 
So, and uh, when the Red Sea departs, and when they cross, they were all amazed. And we are laughing. These people, these efulefus that are kicking against you now, will one day come back to kneel down and say, please forgive us. No, we will behead them. Once they do that, yeah, their head will be off. There be, there's no forgiveness. No, I'm, I'm saying it now. I'm being honest be with you. Before God and before man, there is no forgiveness. There can never be. Once Biafra comes, they are banished. They cannot enter Biafra. Or if we catch them, their, head, their heads will be off. They can never, ever, ever enjoy Biafra. Never. Because they are the ones that will give birth to future spies. Because uh, powers we keep you trying very, to penetrate correct. our land. Very, very correct. I'm telling you, very, they give birth to spies. Very, very I'm telling you, they, they can't enter Biafra. And they know it Mazi, now. Of course they know. Mazi, I want to tell you one thing. I went to Plateau State, 1974. Yes. I schooled in Plateau State. We are mixed with these people. If you watch the type of words that comes out from their mouth, because Aosa, Fulani, and the Plateau people, the Birom people. Birom, yes. Because in Plateau State, they have the Birom, the Shandam, and so on and so forth. If you see the way they look at these people, they look at these people as dogs. The, I mean the main people that owns the land, which is the Biron people. Uh, Furani look at Biron people as dogs, and Biron people are they shouting one Nigeria. <laughs> they are very funny. I, do you know why I left Joss? I left Joss because I went there for education. And the moment I graduated from there, I left Joss. My brother would say, where are you going? I said, I'm going. He lived and died there. I told him that I'm going, that I cannot be here because the mentality we have and the mentality they have is not the same. All they have is to fight and kill. I was approached several, if I could become a Muslim. I told them, look, where I come from, my grandfather is a king. My name is Agbeze Nduko Kalunduko Obuokri. I'm from Abreba in Abia State. Hello? We are listening. The world is listening. Go ahead. I don't want to interrupt you. I'm from Abreba in Abia State. So I'm a place. There is no way I will come and bow down to you. And that was it. And I met my elder brother. I told him what was going on. He told me. He called the man and said, never you come to my office anymore. And that was it. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to understand is this. As long as we have chosen this path, there are so many people who will kick against you. Even your own people, like the so-called Efulefus, that will go to Abuja because of their stomach. I, I saw a video where foolish of them, they were sitting sharing money. Yes. The so-called so traditional rulers sharing money so shamelessly from rulers. Fulani, your own money, oil from Orient oil field, they sell, they now give you peanut. Hi, God forbid, evil. I mean, uh, very sad. these people, these people, these people, I'm telling you, most of them will die with that money in their pocket. After the whole Abacha looting, where is Abacha? After the one uh, back here, he took, where is he? There is those, those talking about house. I want to ask them exactly from what you're saying now. The reason why I don't have any earthly properties, I don't even have a car to be honest. The ones that I have, people give to me. I don't have a car. The reason why I don't have need for these things is because once you die, is the, the only thing the world can remember is what you did when you were alive. Nobody legacy, was going to ask legacy, you. you Legacy. Legacy. Nobody will ask you how many cars he had. Oh, when he was alive, how many houses? Today we talk about Churchill. We talk about Mandela. We talk about, um, uh, for me personally, I talk about Delegiwa. We talk about um, Thomas Sankara. Sankara. We talk about uh, Patrice Lumumba. We talk about um, Martin, Luther uh, Martin Luther King. We talk about Steve 
with Biko and South Africa. We talk about um, who are the great liberators we had. We talk about um, Webb Dubois, W.E.B. Dubois, if you know him very well, that fought um, okay. um, uh, uh, slavery. We well. remember, we remember Malcolm X. Can, can anybody, a movie was made about Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. Did anybody say, oh, they had four houses? Uh, they had three cars. Uh, they had one limousine. Do you see how black people reason like ants? We reason like idiots. So you, the, the, the sum of a human being is how many houses they have. How many houses there are. How many oh, vehicles they have. I mean, uh, oh my God. Mazi, Mazi, Mazi. I'm telling you because uh, they don't know what is coming. I When you keep shouting to our people... Because there was very long time you said these people are coming and our people it fell on deaf ears. What the casina? It fell on deaf ears. And now you are saying that they are coming. And today they are there. And killing and raping. There's also Ubulu, also in Ubulunte, in Ebony State, Ubulunte, and, and, and my brother, the, 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 what I want, the teaching that I want us people to understand is that, why is it that we don't abandon our names as we migrate in those days? We keep the same name. It is yes. to tell you where you're coming from. Because, yes. you know, there is this saying we have in Iboland that if you don't know where you're coming from, you cannot know where you're going. Where you so you going? can now yeah. see the reason why our ancestors retained all those names. If you're from Onechado, you are from Onecha, all the way to Ebony and even beyond. You are from Abreba, isn't it? Yes, I'm from Abreba. I'm from Angogudu in Abreba. Do you know the history of Abreba people? Yes, I know we came from an uh, ethnic area. Thank you. I no, 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 stop there. You are Abreba, you are Igbo. But you, you know that Abreba people are from Efik. Ejaram, yes. Ekoi people. You know that very I well. Have, yeah. I, have so oh. many, I have so many of them. You know what I live? What I live? We call it my Maimaiko. They also call it my Maimaiko. Lantan. We call it Oterikang. And they also call it Oterikang. We have it, but they have it. But. <laughs> I rest, I rest my case. We are all one people. Do you see why? Yes. Do you see why? Before the foreigners uh, said to do this job for Britain, that was why Britain tried so hard. Britain tried. If you look at the, there was this map I saw yesterday in Vanguard newspaper of North and Southern Nigeria. If you look at it, it Britain pushed the North way down into the South. Their mission is to, the only reason they have is to suppress this Biafra. They know there is ingenuity in Biafra. They know that once these people are together as one, nobody can stop them. So they are doing all they can to suppress Biafra, doing everything they can. But unfortunately, as you say, unfortunately, some of our people, some of our fathers did not start this program on time. I wasn't expecting myself to, for this generation to be the ones teaching the, uh, the, the older generations what they should have done in the past. It's a very simple thing. If we are not related, how come there is this chain of our nature all the way from present day economy to the day state, all the way to, to Ebony? Why do we have all this Opolo all the way to Imo State? These are the things that people need to, because God made us in such a way that that we may know where we are coming from, so that we may know where we are going to. Mazi, this thing you've just said, I have somebody from that area. When they are speaking, if I keep quiet, I'll be in his house, they will be speaking. And after everything, I will tell them, this is what you people said. Uh -huh. Then why do you say you are not Igbo people? I told them, look, you are my brother before the last revelation about the those state people. I called him the other day, I said, my brother, I want to I want to share something with you. He came, I played your broadcast to him. It was like a, I said nothing like a, we are all one people. It and is just the it is just the British. It's Britain. Britain yes. wanted to spoil and the work of God because when Britain but, came, they had a revelation that the light of God is in the land of Biafra. And Britain said there is no way the light of God can be in the land of a black man. It's not possible. So out of racism and hatred, Britain proceeded to do the best they can to extinguish that very light. 
That's uh, that's all they have been doing. Division, Willings Commission, dividing us, taking they they have divided us so much it didn't work. They even came to Ebema, cut Ebema into three. They went to Haji, cut her, in the same Haji, the same family. One is Niger Delta, one is Igbo. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> now, now, do you know? Somebody have just reminded me again because as I'm as I'm talking to you or speaking to the whole world, I'm also reading the comments on my page. Do you know overall? In MBC, is them Obolo. Overall, in MBC, is them is them Obolo. But it's only just a, a change of um, of uh, of dialect. And I, I, mean, I don't understand these people. And and can you tell me the reason why? I want to understand the reason why when black people go to school and they study and they teach them something, they don't retain it for referencing. Isn't that is that why we go to school? So that they teach you something, so that if something happens to you in life, you can look back at what you've studied and make decisions. Is that not correct? It's correct. For instance, for instance, when I learned the wipe away history from the education curriculum in Niger area, I was surprised. Does every country has history? And this history has to be passed on to generations. So that this generation will know where they are coming we'll from learn. and where they are headed. We'll learn. Instance, Do you know why they don't want history? They don't want history because if you teach history, the Biron people, the Bachama people, the TV people, the Nupe people, the Yoruba people, everybody will know what happened to Hausa people and prevent it from happening to them. So they stopped history. Fulani is very clever with their British masters. Very, very clever. What they did was to stop history. Because if you read history, you will know that the mistakes your traditional rulers are making today were the same mistakes that the Hausa people made. And Fulani ran them over to cover their land. So by banning history, they make you blind. By banning history, somebody from Anyoma would not know that uh, Miriam Babangida is from their village. Would not know that her name was Ndidi. If somebody from Anyoma would not know the essence of Igoromigoro and the chain of migration from Idu land all the way to Mbise over in Mbise, they will not understand it. Because once you take away history, you make people blind. That is why they are going crazy. That is why they now understand that the game is up. Because there is Radio Biafra, once we are broadcasting, the whole world is hearing, and that is why they are finished. And I must thank you, my dear brother. I must thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for being part of this program this very morning. I have been enlightened myself. I have a caller on the line. This caller, you're going to be the last. Can you hear me? Your name and where you're calling from, please. Yes. Your name and where you are, please. Hey, Chineke, <laughs> My name is Maruko Gugo. Hey, my leader. You live long. My leader, I can hangi. I can hangi. I'm from Anam in Anambra State. Thank calling you. from New Delhi, India. New Delhi, India. Oh, Thank my you. God. I've been trying to call you since I even I even gave up. It was my wife that was trying to call back. She said no. Man, the canon must speak this call. Man, the canon she's from India here. Yeah. <laughs> she's insisting on the canon. I even gave up when she gave me the phone. I was surprised. <laughs> you understand? So uh, my leader, I really greet you. I greet you so much, and I thank you for your good works. I thank you for everything that you've been doing. Thank the you. Almighty God will keep on protecting you. You see. You understand? You see. Most of the things that our people did not know is that. Uh, they didn't know that some people are complaining. Uh, our leader is always talking. He just keep on talking, talking, talking. But that is how it should start. Nigerian people are um, Biafra people are most of us are Igbo people are very, very stubborn people. So if you don't preach to them, there is no way they will get it. If you don't talk to them in a rude way, the person saying that uh, that your leader is talking, talking, talking. They they've been going to church, yeah. and the Pope has been talking yeah. for been uh, for the past church. two thousand years, saying that the kingdom of God it's, is coming. It's one of the things. It's one of the <laughs> things I want to address black, because I was black. born and brought up. I was born and brought up in the northern part of Nigeria, which is KP State. But I was not fathered by uh, our sergeant that we didn't have more of my mom and So the thing is that when we are in the north, when we are small from KB State, each time we want to travel down to, maybe you want to travel down to Onicha or Niger State or anywhere, the Hausa Philanese, what they used to do is that they are imams, they are imams, they will do a recording. They will do a record in preaching against Igbo people in their own language. It's only someone that understands Hausa that will understand whatever they are saying. They're telling their people that they should allow the Igbos to come. 
they are coming to their land and they will use all their money to buy lands and be building churches and be building whatever it is that any time they want they will chase them away hmm. nobody told me these are the things i witnessed with my eye that any time they want they will chase them away and they will be preaching to them from childhood if the almighty is they used to go to school where they used to gather them down they will sit down on the floor with their uh, slate or whatever they call it the mouse will be preaching to them that whenever you see an evil man just recognizing that it's your enemy, it's never your brother. I was born and brought up where in the in the, in the place where it's that even if you are going to the market, they have to stone you as if you are a foreigner in the place you call your own country. You, where where was this thing happening? Where was it happening? In Kebi State, Yauri, in Kebi State. Can you you say in can Kebi you State. can you can you speak Hausa? Very well. Okay. I can speak Hausa very well. Okay. Yeah, I think Hausa should say, I, I, I had a one guy pain. I'm an Igbo man, but I was born and brought up there. Even Yoruba, I can speak Yoruba. Very these are the things that are happening. So in your own you country, know, yeah, you believe was your country, people we are speaking Hausa country? language, they stone you when you go to market and people are opening they their mouth. They stone you when you say, go to market, they beat you. This was a place I was born and brought up. They beat you to the extent that even if somebody is coming to beat you, you cannot feel any more beating because you have taken a lot of beatings from my childhood. These are the experience we had. And they will keep on preaching to their people. After they do salah, after they do their salah finish, they will keep on preaching to their people that if you allow the Igbo people come, because our people are married there, eh? people are buying lands. There are so many places in KB State that it was our people that developed it. So after their mock prayers, they will keep on telling their people, allow them to come, let them come and build. They are using our land to build churches, different churches with different names everywhere. That they will let them build. At the end, we are going to chase them away and take away everything. There is during a time when they had a fight in Onicha. That fight, I've forgotten what, what year was that. That fight took a, a lot of uh, outside people's uh, life in the, in the East. So the, we are we, we are running that time. So the thing is that they were telling them that uh, a lot of Igbo men were scared. They want to sell their houses. They gave an announcement that any Igbo man that wants to sell their house or any other child that wants to sell it, they should not buy. No, no, how someone should buy. That they, all of them are going to run away. All the properties they are built, they are going to take it all. <laughs> so most of these things we are doing is a good work. If you don't continue with the preaching, our people will not listen. There are so many people that if you see them, they will be wearing suits. I used to define somebody. If I want to check how your sense of reasoning is, I'll first of all come and ask you, uh, my brother, what did you think about Nandekam? And you see somebody that claims he went to school, he's educated, he has a degree, and everything. You'll be saying some, saying some shit. Allow that man. It's just like, I say, Baba, you, I think you have a problem. If Nandekam can preach whatever he has been preaching from day one, and he has nothing against you, and you can say things like this about him. You are not educated. I think your brain has has an issue. But these are these are trying to say these are these are black people. <laughs> they are not as magnanimous as white people are. And then this you, these are yeah. black people. They are not black for no reason. There is a reason why they are black and as evil as they are. This is something most yes, that that is. I keep asking people bring out the Biafran flag. Now look at it. <laughs> Why is it that the rising sun is where at the strip of the flag where you have black? Why? Yes. Because we rep a, a black man is the embodiment of evil. I'm being I'm just being honest with you. Now it takes yes. light, it takes the light of enlightenment, it takes reason to educate and enlighten a black mind to become receptive to good ideas or else a black man is the embodiment of evil let me give you an example do you know why our people embrace christianity when it came do any, can, any, can anybody tell me why we embrace christianity do you know why we embrace christianity because there were some practices we were uh, indulging in that even repulsed our own people Go and read things fall apart, and they came Efuna and Moye. Yes, sir. Ike Efuna was given to to Okonkwo to take care of, as um as um as a reparation for a woman, a pregnant woman that was killed from Okonkwo's village, Omoafia. Omoafia people went to those people. They gave them Ike Efuna as payback, and they asked Okonkwo to stay with Ike Efuna. 
he came here for now, you know, of course, um, um, became very close, bonded with um, Ngoye, Okonkwo's um, first son. And one morning, one early in the morning, a keg of palm wine was put on the head of Ikeme Funa, and he was marched into the forest and killed. And the father, uh, the father of Ngoye, Okonkwo, came back from that very um, um, uh, trip, so to speak, without Ikeme Funa. Ngoye asked the father, where is Ikeme Funa? And Okonkwo said he's not longer coming back. After a while, Nguye realized that Ikeme Funa had been killed or sacrificed to avenge the death of the pregnant woman. And Nguye said that he cannot believe in any culture that will condone the death of an innocent child like that. That was why Nguye followed the missionaries. Isn't things fall apart? And I, I said to people that if you want to understand where we are coming from, where we have gone wrong, and what we need to do to make things right. Go and read things fall apart. Don't, not once. Read it five times, cover to cover. Five times. Believe you me, your reasoning capacity will improve immensely. I thank you very much, my dear brother, for calling. Thank you very, very much from India. And that brings us to the close of our program today. Before we decided to agitate or to preach, to educate, to lecture, and to enlighten our people, we knew how difficult it is. Black Africa is the least developed part of the world. They make nothing, they manufacture nothing, they consume everything. To change the mindset of such a people is a monumental task. The reason why we preach the way we do, why we have stayed all this long preaching, is because we want to change the mindset of our people and we want to unlock that key to the key, which is the Godomigodo. I thank you all very much for listening this morning. We are back again live our usual program, 7 p.m. on Sunday as usual. I thank each and every one of you for listening. I thank all of you that called in and contributed immensely. I have also learned so much from those of you who we are commenting on my page. I want to say that this, eve this very morning, our reasoning has been enriched. And on Sunday evening, we shall continue to enrich it. Once again, I thank you very much for listening. And from me, from here, good morning. <laughs>